Thank you very much, honorable members. May her soul rest in peace. Uh, mm -hmm. may, uh, uh, honorable members, again, let me take this opportunity to welcome all of you uh, in this special session, which we hope is not going to be very long. Uh, having looked at the nature of the presentations and so on, but can I hand over now to the committee secretary to give an idea, as an idea who is here and who is not here? Ms. Ntabo? Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, good morning, honorable members, uh, the minister, the MEC is with us. Uh, Chairperson, in terms of the committee members that are here this evening, I have member Stock, I have member Abrahams, I have member Manganye, I have you, Chaperson, uh, mm. member Kungubele, I have member Eris, I have member Van der Merve. So those are the, are the members uh, that are here with us. Um, in terms of the MCs uh, that attended this meeting, I have member um, Umalanga, Mamushongwe, um, I have Northwest, Moiloa, uh, I have the Western Cape, uh, MEC Fernandez, Fernandez, and then I have Eastern Cape member, um, uh, Lu, MEC Lucity. Uh, I can I call to check whether Free State is here? Any MEC and HOD from Free State, can you indicate that you are here today? Uh, can I proceed to KZ? Good afternoon. Good, good evening. Good evening, Chair. Honorable members. Mm. Okay. It's Mukonin Tonga HOD, Social Development. Uh, uh, thank, thank you, you Chair. Thank you. MEC uh, okay. MC, MC Mamiki Kabate has just been called to an urgent meeting, but she she will be joining this meeting. Which, which province is that? It's Free State, Chairperson. Okay. Uh, KZN, let me see. Hello, Lindy. Can you hear me? Uh, no. uh, yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Hi, Chairperson. Uh, there's no indication from KZN. Hello, who is greeting now? Um, Hi, good evening, Chairperson. I just want to um, say that uh, it's Honorable Sukas here. I'm in the meeting. Oh, well, no, it's fine. We are taking provinces. Uh, anyone from KZN? Uh, I'll proceed to uh, the Northern Cape. The, the apologies for the MEC and the HOD. And um, an Mbombo. Sorry, sorry, Chairperson, the HOD is president of the Northern Cape. Okay, sorry, thanks. No, okay. that's good. That's good. Okay. Um, Nepopo? Nepopo, the MEC is here as well as the HOD, acting HOD. Thank you, Sissi. Oh, Uspar! How are you, Uspar? Uspar, Uspar. Um... How uh, thanks, uh, Chairperson. Um, the HOD and the MEC attended um, a, meeting, a meeting with the Premier. Is there any representative from How Teng? Good evening, Chair and members. It's Ungemetsi Kavasia, DDG uh, uh, in Social Development, How Teng. Good. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Those are the MECs and HODs with us. Thank you very much. So tell me the provinces that are here. What is the uh, is in the uh, Who is speaking now? Uh, Mamiki Kabachi from the Free State. Let me see okay, social yes. Development. No, we've got you, ma'am. We've got you. Uh, hmm. uh, Chaperson, so, ha we have okay. the Bumalanga, the MEC is yes. here, Northwest, yes. and then Northern Cape, Chair. 
Yes. The Eastern Cape, the MEC is also here. Yes. The, the Free State is here. Yes. I didn't get any indication from KZN, both you from MEC. Western, oh, you have got Western Cape, not so. Yeah, Western Cape is here, yes. Yes. And uh, no, Northern Cape, the HOD is here. Yes. Uh, Limpompo, the MEC. Um, yeah, I think it's here, the MEC and HOD. Yes. How thank the, we have a representative, uh, U, Ubaba U, Kaba, Kabasi, eh? Yes. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's all, so how thank is represented by? By UTTG, U, U, Mr. Kaba, Kabasi, eh? Which province is not here? I, I haven't get KZN Chaperson. Oh, no yeah. Education. Because we've got eight provinces. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Lindy. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, uh, from uh, Northwest, the HOD, the acting HOD is also here. From Northwest. Thank you very much. Viva Northwest. <laughs> and the, uh, and the acting HOD is on the line. Umalanga. Okay, wonderful. Yes. This is a COVID time. We must always be together. When we make a call, we must meet immediately because there's a bigger enemy there. Uh, can I, again, can I finally welcome all of you, honorable members, our dear provinces that have actually uh, prioritized this meeting today. And uh, the, the leader at national level our minister, Honorable Nindu Zulu. Good afternoon, minister. Good afternoon, Chairperson, and good afternoon to all the MECs and HODs who are here. I'm happy to be here to this evening. Thank you very much, Thank you, Minister. Is LinkedIn here? He should. I get Maguchi Soja Gulumi. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. really? I'm expecting him to be here, Chen. Yes, I'm any, here. On the any book, apologies? Uh, yes, Chaperson, I do have an apologies. Uh, a member Masango, he she will join us later. She is driving to 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 the province. She was out of province. And another one uh, is from member Mvana. She is attending the meeting. Uh, this meeting clashes with the. Uh, PC on human settlements mm -hmm. and member Nguenya, she is not here with us due to ill health. And then my member Fanda Meneva, she indicated that she's gonna be in and out of this meeting because she's also scheduled to attend the PC on home affairs. Um the also an apology from the deputy minister. She's not with us today due to ill health. And then as I indicated that how Deng, the MEC and the HOD attended the, the premier's meeting. And another one is from the is from the Northern Cape. Uh, but the, the but the HOD is here. The Northern Cape MEC at um acting um MEC prior arrangements. Thank you very much, Thank Jefferson. You. Thank you very much, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Zabo. Can we also wish our Deputy Minister and Mam um, to get well quick? Uh, we want them back. They must look after themselves. Uh, now, those are the apologies, honorable members. Can I table them? Chairperson, Mamiki Kabachi from uh, the Free State. I would mm. request that if the meeting goes beyond seven o'clock, that I be released because we are having an agent officials meeting in the province. All of you. I am an official of the ANC, so we are having an officials meeting. Are you alone from first state? Uh, the HOD should be here, Chair. Uh, I can hold on, Cheka. No, it's, no, it's okay, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. 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 Thank
I'm saying we, we, we acknowledge them. We noted them. Thank you very much. There have been no counter apology subject. Uh, we, uh, Ms. Tabo, how, how, how have you organized uh, presentation times? Uh, I've allocated uh, 25 minutes for the, um, the, 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 the main presentation uh, that will be presented to consisting of all the provinces. And then there's uh, 20 minutes for the uh, provincial inputs. After the, present, after the presentation, the MEC or HODs, if they want to add anything, are given three minutes each uh, province to, to, to add. That will make us move faster. If that's the case, uh, Honorable Minister, can you take your, your 25 minutes? Sorry, share the agenda. Oh, sorry. Can I take all the agenda, Honorable Members? We've got one. We have got a presentation on the uh, presentation by by the department, and the last item is an update on the COVID by the department. Those are the only two items. And uh, the, the, the last item, greater part of it will be dealt with when the presentation by the minister is actually done. We'll see how we deal with that. <coughs> minister, can you take the platform? All right, sorry. Honorable members, can I take on the agenda? I'm sorry. Yes, Jim, we're happy with the agenda. I move Thank the agenda. Thank you very much. Honorable minister. I second. Um, Th thank you very much, Chairperson, and thank you to all the honourable members um, who are here uh, as, uh, from uh, Parliament, the MECs, and everyone who's here. And I also wish to thank you again, uh, Chairperson, for enabling this meeting. I will. Um, uh, I would like to apologise that I will be in and out of the meeting. I will make just a few comments and then allow the, the DG to make the presentation as they have already agreed among themselves, the DG and the HODs for the presentation. I, I have an urgent meeting of regulation, so I, I, I requested for an apology that side to step aside, I'll step back and I will come back uh, to the meeting before it ends. Firstly, Chairperson, I think when the department deals with the issue of um, uh, COVID report, I'm hoping that um, uh, we, we might be able to have a little bit of time in the, in the discussion there because the greatest concerns that some of us have, and me in particular as a Minister of Social Development, is the rise uh, in terms of the figures of those that are being infected and the rise also in the deaths. And we know where the hotspots are and it is an appeal from my side to say that ourselves, the uh, a social development a portfolio, including National Development Agency and um, uh, SASA, we should really unite and find a way of working together to make sure that we empower our people with the necessary information so that the behavioral change that is necessary at this point in time, we assist in dealing with it. Because if you move in our community, is you still see a lot of people who are not adhering uh, to the protocols and hence you see the, 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 the rise in the numbers. That's my first uh, plea. My second plea is that we have to continue working in the coordinated manner in which we have been doing. Uh, I know that uh, connecting to the MECs and the HODs, I think the HODs and the DG and the department have been connecting uh, more often than uh, we have as MECs. But of course, I have the full confidence that the MECs at provincial level, they're doing their best because they sit in the um, uh, prof jock at provincial level. Uh, I think that there's got to be better communication between us and national. But I see that if I look at what is presented at net joints, I see that there is a coordination, but the coordination needs to be stepped up a little bit so that um, there can be proper coordination between us all. And because today we're dealing with um, a specific issue of food uh, uh, and poverty in the Republic of South Africa, I do want to make the comment that in the 26 years of the ANC-led government, we have committed ourselves to, to fighting poverty and inequality. And at this time of COVID, 
things are actually getting worse and i'm sure everyone listened to the uh, to the listened to the minister of finance when he made the presentations and in there it is an issue for us as the department of social development what is it that we managed to get out of the budget that might be able to help us as the challenges are happening i also do want to indicate that um, the unwarranted episodes of food insecurity are largely attributed to um, uh, and largely attributed and associated with poverty, growing poverty and unemployment levels. And so maybe as they also present the report on COVID, there might be some bit of a report, not uh, 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 extensively, of what we are doing in terms of the 350, because I know that's the biggest worry that everybody has right now as to how fast can we be able to distribute, how far are we distributing that? Lastly, Chairperson, I do want to say that anti-poverty strategies and, uh, uh, and, and approaches to address food insecurity are things that we need to connect also to the developmental nature of the state. So that even now when we are talking about um, a, a, a food security, we need to look at what do we have as a department and how effective has it been in terms of addressing the issues uh, of food security. The structures that we have, uh, are they adequate? And if we look, for instance, um, the fact that the, the, the unemployment has grown, the figures recently came out, it's clear that we have a, a huge challenge uh, in, in front of us. And my call again would be, we are said in our vision that we are a caring and we must create a caring and a, and a self-reliant uh, society. So as we talk about food, let there be the presentation about the food, but let's look at what we're going to do in the future post um, uh, COVID-19 to make sure that our work with NGOs and NPOs is uh, it's supporting each other rather than fighting each other, especially at this time of COVID. Really, my view is that we need to cooperate with each other as far as we possibly can so that we can empower our, our communities and make sure that as a government, we must be at the center of uh, policy development, changes where we need to do, but also we must depend on the people on the ground so that they can also depend on themselves. Thank you, Chair. I can't take a lot of time. I, I had a long uh, presentation, but I think I don't want to take the minutes away from the presentation from the, from the, from the provinces. Thank you. You've taken five minutes away from the departmental time, but we must appreciate the message, the power of the message you're presenting, Minister. You are saying, the rate of COVID has gone to a high level of intensity and the, the work is getting bigger. The resources are getting stretched. Working together in communicating and educating society is the message you are making. And also having a common voice with regard to resource needs and other things. And uh, we will accept you in and out, Minister. We understand the nature of the phase in which you are. Uh, thank you, Minister. Linton, you've got only up to 22, everything at the department uh, level. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Honorable members, a very good evening. Um, thank you. I think the, what, we, what we're doing, Chairperson, is that we'll, I will speak to the first part of the presentation. And then the CEO of SASA will speak to the second part because we thought that it is important that we include the work that we're doing around food distribution through SASA as well. Thereafter, provinces in line with the presentation will speak to the specific elements related to their provinces. So, um, just we'll merge a minute, Lintin, sorry. You are making a full presentation of the country, which is inclusive of the provinces, and provinces will fit in where you have missed them out. Uh, I, I will speak to the first few slides and then provinces will speak to their specific areas, Chairperson. Oh, okay, area. fine. All yeah. Right. yeah. Th thank you very much. Uh, honorable members, honorable chairperson, thank you very much, uh, Minister. And uh, MEC is in the house. Um, thank you. I, I, I hope that the presentation will be aired or will be shared on the screen so that we can make reference to the specific slides. Um, thank you. Over the past few years, Chair, um, we have had successful. Uh, and well-tested food distribution, uh, a well-tested food distribution model 
which has been plugged into um, uh, the existing facilities of the DSD, which include, of course, uh, the ECDs and so on and so forth. And we have worked with various stakeholders, of course, to ensure that um, uh, uh, we, 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 we reach as much people as we can. And of course, you've had a few of these stakeholders in your meeting a few weeks ago um, that we have partnered with. Um, so this is, again, an indication that uh, the food challenge is not just a departmental challenge, but it's more so um, a challenge that requires a multi-pronged approach, uh, which includes business, private sector, uh, government, and of course, civil society. Um, now, <clears throat> whilst we have adequately responded to the demand, to the new high demand for food, uh, we've had some challenges, of course, that have, that have popped up, particularly around coordination. Um, and of course, uh, some of the issues that we've had to uh, find a way of dealing with is how we deal with uh, with, uh, with building a real time efficiency <laughs> systems that are able to track and monitor what we provide uh, in terms of food. You, you yourself, as well as the minister, have spoken around the, the inadequacy of resources as it relates to the provision of food. And I think uh, that's a fundamental point uh, that uh, we would, of course, look forward to the committee to assist us yes. with um, as and when you move on your on your budgetary processes. Um, so I, I, I thought, let me just say that as, as, as a parting point. Chair, the first, uh, I will jump straight to slide number three, uh, which basically speaks to the contextual analysis. Um, and um, uh, we are highlighting uh, here what the Lindsay, problem is. Chair. Can you flag the presentation, please? It was there, I don't know what uh, happened. Uh, uh, my hope is this, that the secretariat would help us flight it. Uh, Our secretary. Yes, that was the hope, Chair. Linda? Uh, no, uh, there should be someone from the department. Normally, it's the department that flight their presentation. Okay, let me do it. It's fine. Can you do it quickly so that it's Monsieur Sam? So that Sam uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you can see it. I, we can see it. Proceed. Great, thank you very much. I won't deal with the contextual analysis because it's 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 clear, um, but safe to say that I will deal with the first five or six, uh, seven or eight slides, then hand over to the CEO of SASA to deal with the next four or so, and then of course the provinces as outlined. Chair, um, the I will jump to this slide basically um, within the context of the presentation this this, this evening. Uh, the biggest problem that we have, of course, is the rising levels of poverty, uh, which of course have been uh, exacerbated by uh, COVID and indeed the lockdown. Um, how big is the problem? Our estimates are that um, um, uh, we have about 23.8% 23 of the population of 14 million people, uh, at least just prior to COVID, who are food insecure. Um, and of course, we have fed about 1.5, about 5.1 million people across the Republic in terms of the work that we've done and uh, as well as with our various um, uh, stakeholders. Um, the gap, of course, that is left is around 8 million people or so, 8.8 .8 million people. And our preliminary um, uh, estimates are around uh, uh, from provinces are that we will probably need around 868 million people uh, money, 850, 868 million runs to feed around 1.5 million people, at least in the next three months. But of course, if you are to feed the, the, the entire 8.8 .8 million people, we are looking at around uh, 4.5 to around 8 billion rands that we would require uh, to feed our people. Uh, the impact of COVID on, on, on the actual problem, um, status say projected around 50% of the population is at risk of being food insecure. But I want to link this with um, levels of poverty and unemployment and to say that there's an intrinsic link between poverty and unemployment, which results um, in food insecurity. The next slide, uh, I'm having it difficult because I have to shift between my own uh, notes, but it's okay. The next slide basically speaks to uh, chair the amount of food that we've distributed, as I explained, uh, um, uh, in terms of the data that we've managed to collate. Um, uh, but we want to stress here that we're not the only department that is providing food. There are other initiatives, of course, that are providing food. And of course, the one that we've recently worked on is together with the Solidarity Fund. Uh, and we're in discussions again with them to see how best we, we can um, uh, in, increase uh, our support um, uh, to, 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 towards food. The next slide, basically, Chairperson, um, speaks to the fact that uh, pre-COVID, we had a strategy of food. And this is, of course, throughout the provinces as well. 
which is providing cooked meals uh, to all centers. Now, during, uh, and of course, uh, the delivery mechanisms was using our provincial food distribution centers uh, and so on and so forth, and at our CNBCs. Uh, and of course, SRD continues, and the CEO will speak to that. But the important thing to note here is that during COVID, uh, our strategy has changed to provide food parcels. This is, of course, in line with uh, complying with the COVID-19 uh, regulations of uh, social distancing, etc. So we've been providing largely food parcels through a knock and drop uh, um, format that we've been utilizing. During, beyond, during COVID and beyond, of course, the strategy is to move towards uh, providing food uh, vouchers. Now, this is important, Chairperson, because uh, as I indicated, we'll allow um, our people to have a sense of choice. Um, and of course, we're able to distribute uh, food vouchers uh, in the sense that uh, we, uh, it'll also bring back a sense of dignity. Uh, but also, we are looking at a system, Chairperson, um, uh, that that will uh, that will ensure that um, funds are circulated within uh, those communities. And so the intention is that uh, when people are utilizing these food vouchers, they must be able to go to their local spaza shops and be able to utilize the food vouchers also to get airtime and to get electricity, etc. Um, as I said previously, food parcels. Um, there's a stigma attached to food parcels, which is of course uh, a challenge. Um, but also, uh, food parcels are very cumbersome um, and labor-intensive and indeed expensive. So our strategy is to move beyond that. The next slide, Chairperson, basically deals with um, uh, uh, um, uh, the household survey, which was uh, done by Statisay in 2018, uh, and uh, it shows the high demand for food uh, and where it's located. Largely, of course, you can see that Northwest and the Northern Cape uh, and Bumalang and Eastern Cape are the provinces uh, that um, have um, a, a dire need for food, um, um, but this also seem to be there also seems to be a a level of food uh, um, uh, insecurity in um, in, at the, in um, around the outskirts of cities uh, and mainly in informal settlements. So this this slide basically speaks to uh, the the content of our uh, standardized or amended food parcel for COVID nineteen. Now, uh, you will see, Chair, that um, we've had to reduce uh, the, the food parcel drastically to ensure that it also covers, um, 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 so, so that it rather it, we're able to stretch it a lot further. Uh, but what we've also done is that we've included soap uh, as part of uh, uh, this package, uh, but we haven't lost uh, the nutritional value, uh, which is important. So it still has the, the nutritional value of vegetables, protein, starch, etc. Um, so um, I thought let me just share that high level uh, uh, presentation um, on what we are doing together with the provinces in terms of um, how we are reaching out in terms of food distribution. But I must say two more things that are important. I think one of the things we are doing uh, is, um, as you said, Chair, we are expanding the manner in which we communicate uh, how we are moving on uh, on our food parcels. Uh, but also we are expanding the manner of uh, of our of how we are educating society. Uh, around COVID-19. So you'll find that in some of our food parcels, what we've done now is that we've put in uh, information around COVID-19 so that um, the recipients have information around what's happening around COVID-19 and the dangers of COVID-19 for stressing uh, various, uh, various measures. So, Chair, I will end there and I'll ask the CEO of SASA to then speak to the next two slides, Linton. next four slides. Linton. Chair? Linton. Linton. Hello. Uh, the, we we want to check if we cannot align with you and the province on what I'm going to propose. That the department present in totality, and we go to each province to add where its information has been missed out. Is that workable? Uh, it may not, Chair. It's much easier if... I think what I shared was just a high level. The provinces will then begin to speak to the specifics. I'm done with, with that oh, area. Okay. All right. Yeah. Fine. So the CEO Let's will now check. speak and then... No, it's fine. It's all right. We'll okay. see how we handle it. It's all right. Thanks, Chair. Is that... We are going to the... To it now? Yes, that's correct, Chair. Okay. Tozi, how much time are you taking? No, it's okay. just for... It takes five, five minutes, Chair. Yeah, go ask. Give me five minutes. Well, now we are at least... Five minutes, Tozi. 
<laughs> Chair, I, I thank you very much uh, um, the, the, for, uh, to the HODs, to the honorable uh, members, to chairman, uh, the minister in absence and my colleagues. I was going to ask Diane, but because it's a short presentation, I will, I will do it quickly. Uh, basically, this highlights uh, the budget allocations we've had uh, since 2015. The fact that uh, in this uh, uh, past year we had 410 million, and this uh, uh, year we have 407. We have already utilized 127 million over the, the past a few months, months which actually started in March in terms of focusing on the SRD. This is where we were in at, until end of June. These are the amounts that we've used uh, in the next slide, uh, what we've actually allocated in the different provinces. Uh, uh, for what, what the provinces normally do is they will all allocate uh, in each province to say what the budget is going to be for each district to make sure that uh, there's equal distribution of the budget that each uh, province would actually have uh, and make sure that the impact is, is felt across the province rather than centralize it in one area. So the, prov the districts would do it in their areas. It's critical to, to highlight that uh, in terms of, you can go to the next slide, uh, that in terms of the delivery mechanism, uh, the people would normally apply directly through to SASA uh, for, for an, an, an SRD uh, through an application process. With COVID started, we had to put a online application for people to be able to, to, to apply for those. Uh, and the distribution is always done uh, through us, even though the, the people that would provide the, the actual food parcels would be suppliers that we would have uh, contracted in each and every uh, 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 province. Once the delivery happens, it happens either directly to the individual uh, in instances where we can, or go to a, a given area uh, uh, and, and provide uh, that food parcel to a range of people that actually had applied for it. And then, uh, and we give it to them directly because there's documentation that they need to sign before we provide. So it, 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 our, our SRD parcels are never uh, issued to individual councillors or to councillors, even if people may have identified uh, poor people that they know in their areas, because it's critical for us to be able to ultimately account for these uh, when we do the audits, which we are currently in the process of. And this is what the process is that we've used. This is what we've done for the past three months. Thank you, Chair. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, Linton, can we, are we, am, am I correct when I'm saying we're going to provinces now? That's 100% correct, Chairperson. I want to say to the province, I have been looking at the times. If I give each province 10 minutes, it's one and a half hour. If I give each province seven minutes, it's one hour. If I give each province six minutes, it's 54 minutes. What choice do provinces make? <laughs> five. 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 Ah, oh, five is okay. We propose five minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, can you say yeah. what democratic chair is? Thank you very much. Uh, you, here is your order, provinces. I'm going to read you the order of presentation. Northern Cape will come first. Chairperson, mm. uh, you can hear me, huh? Yeah, Chairperson, with your guidance, uh, I'd like to suggest that we follow the order of the presentation, if you're okay with that, Chair. It may help us the, just with the slides. The, what, what, what is the order of the presentation? What difference does it make? Okay, Eastern Cape is first. Okay. Northern Cape. Followed by a Free State. Eastern Cape first. Free State, number two. Yes. Three is Gauteng. Yes. Number four is KwaZulu-Natal. Uh -huh. Number five is Limpopo. Yes. Number six is Mpumalanga. Yes. Yeah. Number seven no, is Northern Cape. Yes. Number eight is Northwest. 
Yes. And number nine is Western Cape. Okay, where we are. Okay. Eastern Cape. Honorable MBC. Your five minutes starts now. Thank you. Um, good um, evening, uh, honorable uh, chairperson of the committee, honorable Can we members. See you guys? Um, Can we see you? Is it possible? Uh, okay, let me process? try that. Thank you, Chair. Okay, proceed, ma'am. Thank you, Chair. Um, good evening and greetings to the Minister, the um, Acting DG, HO MECs and HODs, and everyone in the meeting. Um, Honorable Chair, I think in the province, um, in the context of what was presented by the Acting DG, as far as the demand and what we are able to provide, so far in the the food uh, distribution of the food parcels is as uh, reflected in the slides, where we uh, were able to reach um, 37,085 people with the 5 um, million budget, um, uh, with an average of 7,417 per month, um, flowing and categorized pay district as, as, as reflected. Um, can move to the next slide, uh, LinkedIn. Thank you. Then in the in the, in the province through the provincial through the provincial um through the provincial uh, command council, we were we were able to organize sponsors for food and um, and also some. NGO and private sector coordinated approach. These also include the interventions that are coming from the national um, national department. There was a contribution from the Solidarity Fund. Um, also, there were local farmers that contributed and churches with food parcels and sanitization with a total amount of 4,570. The national lottery with food parcels of about 603 tiger brands and the Albany bed, specifically for the shelters for the homeless, which um, ended up to 4,570. Next slide. Lincoln. Okay, I think I'm almost done because I was going to ask for to take control. Now, <laughs> the, <laughs> okay. Proceed, proceed. Um, thank you, thank you, Robert Chair. Um, the, the channels of e distribution. We 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 have requested our district municipalities and all other sponsors to distribute food through the social development and the DSD platform so that anyone even at a local sphere of governance, they use the stock pen of Sasa so that we avoid duplication and blind spots in the distribution of food parcels. So it has been centralized. And then also there have been targeted, um, targeted intervention in the areas where we know there is um, in our most, most poverty stricken ones and areas there has been um, in the initiatives by our NGOs and CPOs, and all the municipalities have formed their own food bank where they are coordinating the sponsors from various uh, business, local business people, the NGOs and CPOs. Um, can we move to the next slide? Thank you. You've got half a minute. Can we just move to the challenge um, to, to, to where we're speaking about challenges and the mitigating okay. challenges? Mm. Uh, honorable Chair, thank you very much. Um, the, I think the first one was the, the, the poor coordination in the beginning of the intervention. 
between um, ourselves as government, the various spheres of government and the NGO sector, which, um, which, which we try to, to mitigate by utilizing the one center and the localized distribution banks and also the transparent management between what uh, municipalities are doing and what we think together with the NGOs. Also, I think that the province being largely rural and with a high level of unemployment, there's a large number of deserving um, households and the demand for social relief, um, which we, we, we tried. I think that the intervention of the additional social grants are going to come in handy. Also, the... the, 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 the Thank you for listen. People have read this report. You are saying you are actually refreshing us, which is very important. They will interact with those challenges. Thank you Thank very you much. much. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Paul. Thanks very much. Uh, next province, please stay. Uh, no, thank you, Chair. Uh, Chairperson, um. If yes, I should, yes, uh, if yes. I'm here. Do the presentation. I'm here, but I don't see you proceed anyway. Uh, no, let, let me ask me if yes, it can't be right. Uh, no, Chair. We can see you now. Proceed. You can see me now. Okay. The number <laughs> of chairperson <laughs> that were distributed uh, uh, in several districts, five districts that we are having is 50698, uh, which reached out to 263, 140 uh, people, thousands. Uh, the provincial coordinated food donations uh, during COVID 19, we had the equitable share of the province uh, buying 2973 uh, parcels is going to add 2482.491. Uh, the National Department and Solidarity Fund gave us 7,500 uh, food parcels, uh, and then SASA gave us 9,528. The NPO uh, funded by National Health the municipalities of the three states uh, managed to contribute with five thousand five hundred and thirty. All this one through the uh, assistance from national gave us hundred and sixty foot red cross three hundred and fifty one. On wheels is one of the most important things. For now, as the report, they are continuing to give meals out. They were also helped by a party with first aid, 1,500 uh, What is important to note uh, under support is that our efforts only have ended to 5,698 good passes. But they expected to be three seven hundred and thirty three because the uh, NPO uh, is two hundred and ninety uh, people, but because of uh, external assistance, reached uh, the province, which is uh, what I am taking as a success. The channels of distribution test. Uh, some of the food parcels that were bought through the uh, equitable share of the province were distributed uh, the and the MCs. All the MCs were um, deployed to different areas of the free state. Yeah, we've lost the MEC. No, I'm talking alone here. So, ask his chair, I've been talking alone. Now I've lost you. Some of us can 
can hear you. We're not sure what's happening to the whole team. We can no, hear you. Um, can I be heard now? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, I was not okay. aware that was. That was the chair. Hello. The chairperson is also muted. Chairperson, I see you are just muted. Please unmute your mic. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, I was muted. I can hear anything. Okay, uh, Chair, I was not aware that I was also muted. I don't okay. know, uh, Chair, Chair, whether you hear it when I uh, no, no, then. You, you, were, you were clear, you were getting, you were becoming more struggling, but you're all right now. Proceed. Okay. No, I'm saying the channels of distribution then, Chair, uh, the first distrib distribution, which was uh, the food parcels which were bought through the provincial equitable share were distributed through the office of the premier and all the MECs who were deployed to all areas of the free state to go and help with the distribution. <laughs> uh, then we also uh, worked through the CNDCs, the dropping centers, protective workshops, provincial food distribution center, which is ADRA, uh, temporary shelters for the homeless were also uh, were using the CNDCs there. And we are also held by the church-based organization uh, in some uh, instances. Um, the, I think the successes, I've already touched on them when I indicated the number that we have reached because of the NPO, when we could have reached lesser. Um, we were also helped by the SANDF. Is, uh, ADRA also played a meaningful role. Um, there are others that are not captured, like the NPO of uh, Princess Charlie of Monaco. Uh, it's not a captured, but it did a good work. Uh, the challenges, Chair, uh, are as per uh, presented by our national uh, department, uh, that the food distribution is labor intensive, requiring the allocation of additional capital and human resource. We have seen that um, the vouchers uh, are much more efficient, though, and cheaper, though we don't know whether if we go that route, we'll be assisting the emerging and, and small business uh, with that uh, route, but it has been much more, much more cheaper. Uh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, MEC. Thank you, Chair. MEC, uh, how do is the MEC here? No, Chairperson, uh, it's uh, uh, representing Gauti. Can we, in her absentia, congratulate the new MEC for social development in Gauti, no matter what We celebrate her coming to this position, to this family of cooperative and coherent social sector, and we wish you good luck. You can proceed. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I will relay the, the message to, to the MEC. Good evening, Minister, Chairperson, honorable members and colleagues. Um, Chair, the, the presentation uh, from Gauteng uh, starts on slide 29. Um, Chair, we, at, as at the time when we submitted this report, we had distributed 269,133 food parcels, um, reaching um, an estimated 1.3 million people. In terms of the budget, um, uh, the Department of Social Development Equitable Share has allocated 244 million um, uh, for food relief. Now, of the 200, of this 244 million, 138 million was specifically allocated to deal with the demand that comes with uh, COVID and the lockdown itself. However, we were also supported by donations um, um, uh, from, uh, from, from different donors. Um, and, 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 and our total budget, as I said, is 244 million in this instance. Next. Chair, our mechanism for distribution, we've got a central warehouse where we receive donations, uh, but we also have got five food distribution centers in the, across the five regions of, of Gauteng. Um, and we are using those um, um, to distribute food, uh, using the staff at the FDCs as well as community development practitioners, 
and social workers employed by the Department of Social Development. We also have a mixed approach. We do it a knock and drop, uh, but in certain instances, we, we do centralized distribution, uh, obviously under the guidance of, of law enforcement and with observance to the regulations. Chair, just to apologize, you'll see the, the numbers on slide 31 are not the same as the one on slide 20, 29, but the difference is that we did uh, uh, additional submissions after we had already submitted, so the numbers had already grown. But I can confirm that uh, um, this number will be different even as of today, because at the moment, uh, as of yesterday, we had distributed 293,866 food, food parcels, uh, reaching over 1.4 million people. That is as of yesterday. Mm. Next. Next. Chair, this slide is just an example. We, we, our list of donors was quite big, uh, Chair, so we couldn't list all of them, but this is just an, an example. But amongst the donors, the big donors that have really partnered with us, for example, Shell South Africa, uh, which con distributed, which gave the, the department over 10,000 food parcels, uh, uh, Mill SA and, and Sanzaf and many others. So we couldn't list all of them because the list would, would, is, is actually quite big. But this is how basically our, our donor management was facilitated through the central warehouse. Thank you. Chair, I'm going to summarize the challenges in one sentence. That I think over and above all the challenges that we had, the demand for food far surpasses the supply and the ability of the department in Gauteng to respond to the demand. That's point number one. But secondly, Chairperson, our intervention, as also the minister confirmed, the, the impact and the effect of COVID on the poor will last far much longer. And our interventions seems to be limited uh, to a certain time because of the limited resources that, that we have. So that is really, I think, something that the, the committee should be able to reflect on. How do we sustain our interventions to the extent that we can mitigate the impact on the poor for a longer period of time? Thank you very much. Oh, this, is, this, is, this is the most meticulous on time. Thank you very much. Uh, Kingdom, what's your What is KZN doing? What is KZN doing? Uh, uh, KZN? Uh, good, good evening, honorable chairperson, honorable members. Uh, uh, the, and uh, this you are? Oh. Uh, honorable chairperson in Nelly Villagazi from the Department of Social Development in the Kingdom right. of KwaZulu Natal. Proceed. Hey, I know that face. Proceed. <laughs> okay, all right, proceed. Proceed. The on apology on behalf of the MEC is trying to connect, but is part of the meeting. Uh, Honorable Chair, this is the 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 details in terms of how food has been distributed in the province in terms of the districts that are there uh, i can confirm that uh, we so far we have reached um, uh, 107000 uh, uh, people and when you look at the expenditure to date is above 6.2 uh, million uh, you can move to the next slide we do have the channels that we have used and honorable chair and members in terms of how food has been distributed uh, we used um we distributed food parcels to households uh, in the province in ensuring that household and beneficiaries are clustered as per geographical settings and we also prepared you know in terms of the pickup points and some of the food were, pick, were collected from the satellite uh, sites. 
Uh, what is also critical, um, a chairperson, is that we enhance the communication lines with households to ensure that the food is delivered and shared before the delivery of the food parcels. And we have prepared the database of all the profiled uh, beneficiaries by social workers and community development uh, workers. Uh, the IAC and this is chairperson that have the details of all the beneficiaries that are receiving food. And then the number of food parcels that are allocated per household are linked in terms of the CNDCs. Can you move to the next uh, slide? Uh, local parkies that we use as we distribute food. In terms of the organizations that we use to distribute food parcels, we are utilizing the NPO's uh, service providers to distribute the social relief of stress. Uh, these are the NPO's that you, we use, the WOSA, the P Healing Perhaps, as well as the Tigazi Foundation. Uh, the next slide. There are successes, Chairperson, in terms of how we distribute a food. For example, due to the partnership with the Action Development Agents, communities residing around the CNDCs were able to be profiled and, and also we could, they could not benefit from the center due to the capacity uh, in terms of the food that are allocated to those uh, 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 areas. But that partnership with Action Development Agents had assisted us to reach some of those people. That good partnership, even with the local leadership, it made it easier for us to identify the, the, the beneficiaries. In the KZN, we do have war rooms which are aligned in terms of the operational operation Sugamasake, which is now a district development model. And those people are referred to those uh, war rooms by the leadership, which include Amakosi, as well as uh, the local clinics. Uh, we have a, a total of uh, 14,347 food parcels that were distributed to those uh, identified individuals in those areas. And the availability of the service providers to distribute social relief of distress and other food related programs, a chairperson have assisted us to reach more people. Uh, the next slide. Uh, in this slide, it looks into the provincial coordinated food donations during the COVID 19. Uh, during this time, we received food through Solidarity Fund. Uh, which uh, was distributed in partnership with the 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 action the action development agency. We also had uh, donations from Old Mutual uh, through the Old Mutual Foundation that we also assist, that assisted us as a province to access more people. So the food that we got from Old Mutual was uh, to the tune of 330. 630,000 and we have distributed throughout the province and that food has a um, as uh, it came to uh, it got finished because we finalized the distribution the, last distribution the next slide the challenge is chairperson um i must indicate that the challenges are more or less in line with a uh, housing in terms of having more people that need food as compared to the food that we have. Okay. In some districts, due to weather, and there are challenges in terms of how we distribute food, because these days it's very cold and also the, ter the terrain in those areas. One of the challenges also was the issue of the beneficiaries that are for CNDCs, which are, CNDCs, which are a Cape Chat audience, where you find that a profiling has been done prior, and then you find that there are more food, there are no more people who need to be supported uh, with a uh, food, and then the limited budget per person to reach uh, every individual that needs uh, food in the area. Oh, thank you very much, chairperson. Uh, thanks very much, Honorable Chairperson, and good evening, 
members of the portfolio committee and my colleagues. My name is Desmond Mahopo. I'm the acting, acting HOD for the Department of Social Development in Nipopo. Uh, without wasting any time, Honorable Chair, let me try and zoom straight into what we have actually been able to register as a province so far in terms of the total number of food parcels that have been distributed. As a province, you can see that the food parcels that have been distributed to date is 108,419, of course, reaching a total number of 542,095 with the expenditure of 39 million. The next slide talks about the mechanisms and channels that we have put in place, which of course we must indicate that these were very much effective and efficient mechanisms. Though of course we have learned even hard lessons in the process. As a province, we have utilized the Provincial Food Distribution Center, which is managed by a women NPO. And we have also utilized the food banks. We have established five food banks where all the food donors were able to deliver their food to that central point for the purpose of proper coordination and management. We have also established the local distribution teams, which were led by DSD across all districts and local municipalities. And SASA, NDA, and municipality, I mean, the uh, municipalities, both district and local, including the traditional uh, leadership. They were actually forming part of those distribution teams. And thanks to the traditional leaders for the role that they have played, of course, including our councillors. The other mechanism we're using is that of volunteers, the community-based volunteers. And of course, one must take this opportunity and thank all the volunteers who were able to volunteer their services. Uh, and then we were also using the knock and drop method, uh, door to door. And the successes, uh, perhaps I'll skip that slide because uh, you can peruse it during your own time. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, the next slide talks about the donors. Amongst other donors was Solidarity Fund, Disaster Relief Fund, the National Lottery, Old Mutual, and of course, the Giri Knox. And let's go to the next slide. The next slide, Chair, talks about the challenges that we have actually encountered in the province. And the first one being the higher demand of food. As you are aware that we are a rural province, uh, so there is too much uh, demand even currently. Hence, there is a serious donor fatigue uh, for the fact that the economy now is open. So donors are also gradually pulling, pulling out. The second uh, challenge is about the lack of control for over the donations that are made outside of the DSD. And this is as a result of the fact that uh, you would also be aware that there is a, a court case currently, which is actually against the department. So as such, donors are just distributing food uh, willy-nilly. So basically, those are the issues, Chair, in respect to, 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 to the province. And of course, lastly, we must also indicate that as a province, we have developed a social relief package, which we have costed, and we have been able to submit this social relief package to our provincial treasury, national treasury, and to the mining sector for them to assist us in making sure that we uh, assist our people. Thanks very much. Thank you, Dad. Uh, can you follow that example, Pumalanga, of Houten and Lipopo? Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, from Pumalanga, my name is Belinda Mujapili, the acting HOD. Um, the presentation is as follows. Uh, on the first slide, we indicate the number of food parcels that were delivered. And um, I've just noted that the, the, the presentation here is not the corrected one because 
We submitted a corrected version yesterday. I'm not sure. Tell us the corrected one verbally, they will sort it out. Thank you, Chair. The corrected figure is 60,188 food parcels distributed. And the number of uh, beneficiaries that were reached is 300, 940. The expenditure was 48,451,000. On the following slide, Chair, we indicate the mode of uh, distribution. We used the provincial food distribution centers and uh, we also partnered with the Department of Agriculture um, through a, the agricultural hub that they, they've been, has been established in the province. And uh, we delivered um, about 37,700 food parcels through the agricultural hub only. Over and above that, we used our officials in the department. We also used various donors. And then um, the 60,188, it excludes the um, Solidarity Fund uh, donation. If we include the Solidarity Fund donation, the total that we distributed is 82,000 food parcels. And um, I'll talk to the um, partnership with the Department of Agriculture. This was done as a result of a command council uh, resolution where the decision was that uh, we should deliver 100 food parcels per ward. And the funding that was channeled through that initiative from provincial treasury is 32 million. And on the successes on the food delivery uh, distribution, uh, we were able to reach a large number of beneficiaries and um, we were able to um, deliver directly to their households through the knock and drop. And uh, we also had a collaboration with the Department of Education where the Department of Education donated food that was still at the schools and we repackaged it and it also added to the amount of food that was distributed by PSD. The next slide speaks to um, the donors. It's a list of donors. Uh, I'm not going to read all of them. Um, we'll go to the slide that speaks to the province specific challenges. Uh, the biggest challenge was the hu huge demand for food, which could not be catered for due to the limited budget. Because as you could see, Mpumalanga has a huge um, gap dealing with a very, very poor people due to the fact that we have two borders that are bordering the province. And then we have uh, registered 25,656 uh, needy families that we could not reach. And then uh, we also had challenges in terms of the IT systems to, to manage the information of um, beneficiaries. We were using the NISIS system, but it had its own um, limitations. And uh, on the uh, budget of homeless shelters, we also had a challenge there because we were faced with a number of um, homeless shelters that we had to establish, but we had limitations on the budget. And as we speak right now, we still have a monies that are still owed that we still have to settle but we do believe that the COVID-19 uh, SASA grant of 350 will assist us in terms of uh, addressing the, the, the demand and all the other budget pressures we have been able to escalate them to both the provincial uh, treasury and the um, national department as well and we are busy engaging with COPTA with regard to a multi-sectoral working agreement to address the issues of the lack of the budget for the homeless shelters. Thank you, Chair. Whoa, I, I you followed the example. Uh, good, good evening, Honorable Chairperson and members and MECs and colleagues. Uh, we followed the same 
Hello. Yeah. Proceed. Proceed. OK. Um, I, I, I think as the Northern Cape, we followed the same trend as the other provinces. For a small province, I think we fa fairly uh, kind of had an, an impact. We had a total of 52,673 uh, households that we've reached and the people benefited that it's over 263,000 people and of which the expenditure was 31,000 um, and 662 rand. The channels used, um, if we can go to the next slide, Honourable Chair, you would know that as a province, um, we are short of resources as much as and so we relied solely on our officials uh, of the entire DSD and volunteers, which um, took travel through the length and breadth of this vast province at, and delivered these food parcels at a household level. And uh, it was quite an extensive task. Uh, together with the SANDF and SAPS police assistance. The next slide, please. Okay. Um, what were the impacts made through this? We could uh, successfully feed the poor and vulnerable households. Uh, we also uh, reached the indigent households because the targeted was not only the the poorest of the poor, those experiencing hunger, but also we worked very closely with our local government, our local municipalities. So we could feed those in distress and the homeless. We took care of the needs of the learners, uh, especially those at schools uh, and the, the, the nutritional, um, the children benefited from the nutrition, uh, uh, nutritional schemes were reached. We, uh, one of the highlights, Honourable Chair, was the fact that we could spread the expenditure amongst 288 local suppliers to benefit, to be, to benefit uh, from that. So we assisted emerging uh, businesses through this. Um, yeah, we worked with local municipalities, I said, and we mobilised the resources and we could successfully to our AG account uh, for all this as non-fund data because we are being audited. Can I get the next slide, please? Honourable Chair, you would see that there's quite a list of uh, donors. People gradually uh, just poured their heart to the poor and um, we could at least uh, assist an additional 17,000 uh, households through donors and there's a list of them. I'm not going to list all of them, but we were, were really overwhelmed by the assistance and the support from all walks of life that assisted uh, us as, as uh, the Northern Cape government. Can I get the next slide, please? All right. Uh, same with other provinces, um, the demand really uh, is excessively uh, and given the 2% budget that we have as DSD, we, we are unable to supply the most, most needy. We uh, had challenges with uh, mass transport of food parcels. You, you should know that our provinces is vast and uh, the spatial realities were, had quite an impact on us in reaching every person in every corner of the province. Uh, the uncoordinated distribution of donors. You would know, Honourable Chair, we are the hub for renewable energy. We also the hub for mining. So uh, they, we had problems with double dipping and it was difficult to manage that because they would distribute without consulting us as DSD and that also took some time for us to manage. Um, yeah, obviously there were protests uh, over demand which Your resulted in community. Gone, okay, <laughs> thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Northwest. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson, uh, members, uh, MECs, and my colleagues. With regard to Northwest, 
That is an equitable share in terms of our budget. Uh, we had to request the provincial treasury where they also indicated uh, they assisted with the repurposing. Then they allocated us a 27 million. So for, for now we have already uh, spent for COVID-19, we have already spent, uh, spent 11 million. The dedicated amount for foods, uh, for, so SRD, is, uh, the allocation is 18 million. So we are left with 6 million. That we still have to procure additional food for our deprived area. Then I, when I go to the next slide, in terms of the uh, the next slide, in terms of the channels that we have used, and because of the issue of the portfolio approach, uh, which is always emphasized by our minister and our MECs, where we decided to partner, we work collaboratively with SASA, where we set up a call center, and we have also used our additional cell phones that we have within the department, that we have social workers that are receiving the calls in addition to the one of SASA. And then what we did, we have a qualifying criteria. We had to review our SRD, come up with a protocol in terms of that. What you also did in terms of distribution, we use our social service professionals and also our NPOs. The next slide. The next slide, please. And then in terms of the successes, we are also noting that the partnership we have with uh, SAFA, the, our um, a departmental COCTA in terms of provision of uh, facilities, also Department of Public Works, is also and our partners with uh, mines and all those uh, partnerships, the commitment of our officials, and also the issue of making sure that we review our pro protocol because we still have to report to our different oversight board. In the next slide, in the next slide, we are reflecting uh, the issue of. Uh, the donors, I'm not going to mention all of them, but we appreciated the donors, even though most of them were in the, the mining area around Clegstop, around Bojanala, and then the other area in terms of that is the deprived area is Ngakamdil Mulema and the Paris M. And then in terms of that, what we did is that uh, the equitable share concentrated also on the two, two deprived uh, uh, district that is Ngakamdil Mulema and the Dr. Aras M. The next one in terms of uh, um, uh, I've done with the uh, the donors. We are also appreciating even the faith-based organization. They also partnered with us, uh, supporting our shelters, and then also individual people. They also contributed in that regard. The next slide, in terms of uh, uh, the challenges, uh, in terms of the challenges that we also picked up, is the issue of. Um, a donation that were limited in terms of the areas that like I've already mentioned around the mines, uh, but we managed it. It was done in partnership with our department. And what we have done also in terms of this issue of the donors, we have a register that is guided by the National Treasury Regulation that we need to have a register where we declare the donors the notion that we have received. And the majority of the donors were in the economic viable areas like your Rustenberg, your Madibane, and also around Macrosana, but we did also manage that uh, uh, issue. The issue of negative media, we have managed that to say we have a standardized food parcel, and we need to make yeah. sure that the communication was uh, circulated where the MEC also uh, uh, also make sure that uh, in terms of the media and communication, um, key messages that we're providing services in line with the, the assessment and also the protocols that we have also developed the last part is in terms of the the issue that I can also indicate is that we also have a, a rapid response uh, that has been approved by by the executive authority in terms of making sure that those depressed areas that uh, are challenged the most deprived areas are covered. So this is as far as Northwest is is concerned, and I appreciate. Thank you, Chairperson. Wonderful on time. Let's cap. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, we can go straight yeah. into the number of food parcels distributed. Um, we'll, you see that uh, the department has a total of 50,758 yeah. have been distributed so far uh, to uh, approximately 250,000 people uh, who've benefited. Uh, the expenditure to date is 23,525,000 uh, rand. We have uh, still got uh, about 5,000 parcels uh, that are being distributed at the moment, uh, which will then bring the total to approximately 55, uh, close to 56,000. And then a further 3,000 parcels are 
uh, have been purchased and are in reserve for people who are self-isolating and uh, so that they, they can be provided with support where if, if they cannot get to the shops while they are in their self-isolating in their in their homes. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, so the, the channels to distribute food, we've uh, we funded four large humanitarian relief organizations to provide uh, the food parcels. Uh, the Department of Social Development's regional offices uh, and local offices have been doing the assessments of individual uh, beneficiaries to determine uh, if they meet the criteria. And uh, the, the distribution is then done by the NGOs that were funded by the department. Uh, next slide, please. I think uh, a lot of the we've we uh, you would have seen this, and I think a lot of the challenges are the same uh, as they are in in the other provinces. I think the big challenge in in our case is that the distribution of food parcels is very difficult, uh, logistically speaking, and takes quite a long time. Uh, so it's not necessarily the most effective distribution method. Uh, in terms of uh, the donations, uh, we've listed them there. There was some very generous donations that, that we took on board. But I would like to also flag that there was a lot more donations uh, that were not uh, taken in by the department. Uh, I think also uh, the uh, if we can go to the next uh, slide. Um, the, uh, the the major risks, uh, I think, is the same as the other provinces with the, the need outstrip supply. Uh, there was quite a lot of um, uh, 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 unrest around food distribution uh, that was created uh, because some people felt they should receive food and they didn't. Um, we've had uh, a, quite a challenge of coordination, um, but with your permission, I would like to just very quickly put up a graphic for you to, to illustrate just how much food actually is distributed uh, in the province because the Department of Social Development is actually only one player and the province established um, a humanitarian relief work stream under the Provincial Com uh, Coordinating Council uh, that allowed us to pull in uh, all of the other um, uh, players in the space of food provision. And I think you, what you can see on this, on this map uh, is that this is the part, I don't know if everyone can see this, uh, this represents the Department of Social Development's contribution in terms of food parcels, this represents the Department of Local Government uh, and the municipalities, and you'll see that approximately 100,000 uh, food parcels were distributed by municipalities, and the Department of Local Government was funded by Treasury to do this, and then the NGO sector uh, on its own accord, uh, well over 100,000 food parcels. And in terms of uh, hot meals provided, approximately 390,000 uh, hot meals were provided, uh, as well as um, the school feeding schemes were reactivated, providing uh, approximately 100,000 uh, meals per day of, of the feeding scheme uh, to learners that came to the school and collected the food on a takeaway basis. Uh, so I think it was a multi-sectoral effort yeah. and social development was called upon to coordinate it, um, but we were um, not the only player and the, the municipalities were excellent uh, and the schools and even some of the ECDs also started feeding uh, on a takeaway basis as well. Uh, so thank you very, very much. Thank you, sir. That down again. Uh, thank you very much. Uh... Honorable members, can I make a proposal? Because taking into account a law that has been presented by the province, by the national department and provinces, I suspect a lot that is in the update is set up here. Why don't we ask the department to take a few minutes and deal with the last item so that we discuss all of them? Are members in agreement? Yes, Chair. Linton. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. How much time the next take? Uh, this give us eight minutes. We should be good. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. I have the minister. All right. <laughs> take your eight minutes. Thank you. I'm going to ask Connie to speak to the first part and then the CEO of Sasa to speak to the next part.
Um, good morning, honorable chairperson, honorable members, MECs, hey, ministers. Good evening. Good morning. Hey, son. Hey, I'm hey, like problems so now. We don't sleep. Sorry, we don't sorry. sleep, so I can't even do the day. Sorry, uh, honorable chairperson. Can I please? Can you see me, honorable chair? I see you, and I'm in charge of this meeting, not the minister. Thank you. Um, Chairperson, can I just speak to guys? Sorry, sorry, before Connie <laughs> continues. Chairperson. Hello. Can I please ask Connie not to use the presentation that she's sharing and use the presentation that I will share? Hey, uh, so if you can uh, stop uh, sharing this presentation. Then I'll have a problem. Uh, I minister, you, you won't have a problem. One because it's shared to the same issues. I'm concerned about the last part of the presentation. So I don't want us to mix it up. So if you could use the, the, the one that I will share, please. Thank you. Can I suggest that I use this one up to where I end and then remove it and then you will uh, project the other one. What is happening one. now? Can, can, can we do this in the meantime? Can, can the one who was going to present after you present and then you come call later? So that you sort out the approach. Minister, Minister, if you want to say something. No, Chairperson, I agree with you. Can they sort out the um, can they yeah. sort out the logistics of the, the previous presentation? Let's get the next one if it's ready, and then they will come back. They'll Thank come back, you. yes. I thought it's the same one. So is that CEO Sasa? Yes, the CEO can proceed. Ah, my CEO. Yeah, the, How many the minutes? Two minutes? Is it three minutes or three minutes? How many? <laughs> uh, th thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. I will try and do a um, maximum of five minutes. Okay. Uh, so, listen, uh, if we can just go to the next slide. Then tonight, driving on your side, I can't drive because the presentation is with you. Okay, so it's just to, to highlight that uh, in the previous uh, presentations, we had highlighted the fact that the budget allocation that we had was a uh, 33 billion, uh, uh, despite the the the, uh, the the commitment for the 50 billion in the announcement yesterday. It was indicated that. The allocation now comes uh, to 41 billion in terms of us dealing with this particular grant, which then means that uh, in terms of what we, we have, uh, after having uh, resolved uh, the issue of the de uh, declined, uh, what you call a declined applications, which we've noted that m many of them have come as a result of the UIF database, which we've resolved today we then will be able to uh, potentially have allocated have sufficient funds for us to deal with up about uh, a 7 million uh, uh, clients, which we think uh, will help us cover some of, the, of, of the, the people that potentially have lost their jobs over and above the current that we actually have. Can you go to the next slide, Linton? <coughs> So the, these are basically the top ups, which we've been speaking about uh, previously. And what's going to happen is that we're going to have the next uh, tranche of payments in the next cycle, in the next cycle of payment, which is going to start on the third. And these are basically running on their own now that we've resolved uh, most of the issues. Go to the next one. Uh, that's basically the different uh, lines in terms of those measures that were covered. And initially, we indicated that uh, the amount we had was 3.4 billion. We still have to indicate with DSD to get an understanding in terms of the allocation that was agreed on, or that was announced yesterday, as to how that is actually going to be to be to be deployed. Uh, can you go to the next slide? So this is basically a recap on the qualification criteria. And as the minister said earlier on, we need to, to, to look at uh, the criteria for the, for the new line in terms of uh, providing support to the new clients uh, that we are likely to have 
which therefore means that uh, it becomes even more imperative for us to look at other channels uh, over and above the channels that we, we have. And the ones that we have committed that are taking too long to come to the fore, we need to make sure that we fast track and we make sure that we deliver quickly. And now that the system, most of the systems are already bedded. The next slide. Uh, it's very important to indicate that uh, in terms of the payments, which had been uh, taking quite a bit of a challenge, actually, we have now uh, in, uh, uh, paid, uh, actually, the, this is an older slide of the 22nd of June in terms of today's date. We have since uh, paid uh, 2.1 million people uh, of all the people, clients that we had approved of the 3 million and the intention is to make sure that we complete all the people that had already applied uh, because most of them are already in the payment process. Can you go to the next slide? So these are the, 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 the payments uh, and, and the applications and the approvals that have been done uh, per province uh, in terms of what we've delivered so far. And the idea is to make sure that of the 3.1 million we complete that this month because we need to also ensure that we pay for the next second tranche, which is for the uh, June payment. Because so, sorry, so sorry, 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 CEO, that 61 percent is is payment of the approved. The 61 percent chair is when you look at the number of applications, the number of people that had applied were were seven million. The number of approved were 3.2 million. The payments that we had done is now just slightly above a uh, um, uh, uh, 61 percent because we've now paid 2.1 million. Of, of, so of, those, those have, of those have been approved. Of those that have been approved, which was the the the, the 3.1 million check. Okay, all right, proceed. All right. Can you go to the next slide? So that's what we've paid uh, per per province in terms of all the different allocations. Can you go to the next one? Uh, as I indicated earlier on when we started was that we have about 2.9 million uh, uh, clients that had uh, had failed in the initial uh, uh, vetting process. And the majority of them actually came from, um, from, from the UIF database. Today, we got a, a clean and newer database which we're going to be validating. Uh, uh, we had started the process actually today, which we're going to complete uh, to make sure that we can then get back to the clients uh, because clearly the, the database was too wide and some of them got, uh, uh, got declined. And we'll then get back to the clients and indicate what the position is. Uh, the suspicion is that many of those clients will actually qualify, which therefore means that we'll have to fast track the process of payment all those clients that had been waiting and were initially rejected. Uh, next slide. So these are the numbers uh, in terms of the, where we were uh, uh, previously. So the numbers in terms of uh, the, the reasons why uh, 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 people uh, did not actually get validated. So on the soft plan ones, these are very clear because they would actually be people that are in our database that would have declined, and these ones definitely would not qualify. The ones of UIF, the two, uh, 2.090, not 2.9, 2.090 are the ones uh, of UIF that we're going to run through the system again to make sure that we understand as to what the issues are in relation to that. And we've since uh, defined a, a process for people to be able to appeal in cases whereby even after running them on this new database, including on the SARS side, that they don't qualify. On the NISPA side, clearly there are also students uh, that uh, tried to apply, and with those who are not going to work on to run them through again, because uh, they are clearly uh, students. On PESAL and PESOL, it's interesting to note that we also have public servants that had also applied for the 350, and those ones were easy also actually uh, get out of the system. And those that are uh, with in the SARS database, we had a huge engagement with SARS yesterday to look at what it is that we need to do to make sure that they get vetted again uh, on the SARS space. So 
so we'll look, look at that, but the, the, the key focus is basically going to be on the UIF side because that's where the material numbers are as we look at the other areas. Important to note that there's other uh, databases that we need to continue to look at, but this will not stop us from continuing the process to make sure that we first the, the, the process because we're now going to hit, hit, hit month three and we need to pass Thank you, Dad. Thank you. Thank you. Corey? Um, thank you, Chair. You know which prayer, you know which prayer you're going to follow now. I have How been. Minutes? How many minutes, Connie? I've been put off now, but I will try to come back no, to. No, come the... in. I know you're strong. I know you're strong. Um, uh, how many Chair, the, what I will talk about is basically the preparation in the. How many minutes do you opening. want, Connie? It's, it's, I didn't share. How many minutes do you want? Five. Yo, okay. Oh, uh, I will right. try. I will try to do less. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm just talking about the preparation of opening of ECDs. Uh, in that slide that I've projected now, if um, it can be seen, it's basically why we closed the ECDs and also why we are considering opening. Basically, we are acknowledging that uh, the issue of return to work is uh, forcing uh, us to reconsider to open ECDs and loss of income, issues yeah. of nutrition, and also the fact that we regard uh, ECD as safe space for children um, uh, from abuse, neglect, and exploitation. Chairperson, we also came up with the framework. Mm -hmm. We are working with the sector. We've got almost over 70 civil society organizations. We're working with UNICEF and uh, Nelson Mandela Foundation. We came up with a framework. Um, these are the elements of the framework where it provides the protocols, the uh, standard operating procedures, the MNE framework, the support packages for those that are struggling to meet the COVID-19 uh, protocols, issues of capacity building, program redesign and communication. We are also saying, we acknowledge that there are a lot of um, unregistered uh, ECDs out there that are not registered. So we are saying um, the ones that will open should be registered in terms of the Children's Act. They yes. also need to have applied and also received yes. their notice to do so. And we launched a program to bring on board those that are unregistered because there's an acknowledgement that even if we, we 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 ignore them they are there and our children are there we need to bring them on board so that they can uh, um, be Hello. considered we have a program called bangasali which yeah. is a shitsoka name for let's not leave anyone behind so oh. as we speak now we have all the person please mute the person no, sorry no 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 i give it there are intervention times uh linton there's a complaint by the members that uh Connie's presentation is not uh held it's not it's not uh what you what you say in english when you put it on the board it's not it's uh, the it's screen. not shared. It's not shared. It's, it's not shared. Oh, that's the word. Yes, okay. it's not shared. All right. Even in the Sasa one. Is it Even shared in the now? Sasa one. Yes. Is it shared now? It is shared yes. now. Yes. Yes, proceed. Oh, but okay. also make sure oh. that we get the ones from Sasa. Okay, I was under this slide where I was talking about about the framework and the elements and also who should be opening as and when uh, the date is announced and the readiness has been established. You all remember, honorable uh, uh, members and chairperson, that partial care facilities are also uh, included, which is your after school uh, care services that are attached to schools. Um, so this diagram just shows uh, the phases uh, that we have put in place. Phase one we have done with it was basically a documentation to make sure that we 
develop all the documents that are required to guide the sector to open. And then the second phase, it's where now we are saying uh, it's, it's pre-opening measures have been put in place uh, where we say each and every ECD should do self-assessment using the tool that we have um, uh, uh, developed. Uh, so that process is taking place from Monday. We gave it two weeks and then the verification by the department will also start simultaneously but with an extra week so that we can identify those that need assistance and those that are 100% compliant we will open on the date which the minister will, pro will pronounce in the Gazette. Now uh, after that we will uh, open those that are ready and those that are not ready we will will um, remain closed, however, being supported to be able to comply with COVID-19. But we have already sent the circular out to the sector and the provinces, the standard operating procedures, all the guidelines that are needed and the tools are already uh, with provinces and the sector to be able to start the work that will prepare for the opening. Then there will be ongoing monitoring with the teams that provinces have established to be able to assist in monitoring the, the, the ECDs. Uh, I won't go uh, deep into this in terms of the uh, uh, elements. These are the elements that are in the framework. I've indicated the Abangasali, and also what is important is the redesigning of the program based on the current curriculum of zero to, to four that was uh, developed by uh, basic education. Now there are risks that we have come up with and mitigation strategies so that as we continue to work in the sector, we take those into consideration and the mitigating um, uh, strategies that we have put in place regarding the spread of the COVID within the facilities. We are a cognizance of that and also the issue of child abuse, the high number of unregistered that I spoke to, but also the high risk uh, of loss of employment by the practitioners and, 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 and so on. Now, the next slide, this slide 10, is just to begin to show members and the Honorable Chair what are the examples of some of the uh, mechanisms we have put in place in the SOPs. Uh, because some of the people were arguing that it's not possible to regulate the ECDs. These children are so young that they won't understand anything, they won't comply, they won't even wear masks. It will be dangerous to them. So we have taken that into consideration in terms of what will happen. You, you, the responsibility is put on the adults themselves within the center. Um, in terms of the PPEs, we are saying all adults working in the center should wear face mask at all times, including uh, your gloves and all that. And we should uh, also make sure that they wash uh, or change their masks every day because the kids will not have the masks, most of them, especially your 24 months and below, because they can't wear a, a mask. Then there are procedures for drop off and pick up, which parents are not used to, which they will have to get into the new normal of saying this is how we are. the procedure will follow in terms of dropping our kids and picking them up. And then the next slide, it's more on your physical distancing. We are saying, although we understand it's difficult uh, when you are helping a child to use the bathroom, supporting them to eat or giving them comfort when they are in distress, it's hard to, 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 to keep a distance. But we are saying, make sure as an adult that you are always wearing your protective clothing so that you protect yourself and the child. But also we are proposing some mechanism not to share mattresses and also the way they can sleep if there's resources are, are not enough. And also the one meter, we know that in the regulations, we talk about 1.5 meter. So we debated one meter, 1 1.5 and two meters. I think we came to one meter that we are proposing that there should be some distance when they are sitting in the table and eating and playing and, 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 and learning. Um, I'm also putting a picture just to show how in other countries um, they are doing it now during COVID. You will see there are those pictures where the responsibility is on the adult. The children are not having masks, are not having anything, but the one thing the children should be doing is to wash hands regularly or sanitize and, uh, regularly. But the adults, they must have their masks and the gloves but the children will queue and wash hands. You will see there, when you look at that red and white, there's no um, uh, social distancing there. Thank you very much. Well done, Colin. Thank you. 
Uh, honorable members, thank you, Connie, but I wish you can see the video of the Chinese kids. Have you ever seen it, Connie? I'm done. Have you ever seen the video of the Chinese kids? Yes, I did. Going, going to school and under COVID. Yes, yeah. they press. They, they, wow. There's something there. They put wow. their hands. That is a military style. But it's exciting. Yes. I was honest with you. Yes, yes. I've seen the that. Infrastructure one. is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. uh, honorable members, now we are going to talk. You, when you speak, you speak once in everything that you want to speak. But you know our standard time is not more than five minutes. Honorable members, uh, the names. Lindy. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. I have five members who indicated their interest to uh, raise questions. And mm. number one is member Eris. Uh, Eris. Number two is member Alexander. Alex. Uh, number three is member Afanda Merve. Who is Abraham? <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, Number yeah. three is member Briet. Briet Akbar. Uh, yes. Number six, uh, five is member Sukars. Number uh, say number six is member Stock. Okay. We... Is that all? Yes. Uh, yes, Chair. Let me check what my WhatsApp. We, we, we are done. I want to pause again. Honorable members, once this list is spoken, we go to the closing, we go to the response of the department. Going. Going. Doom. <laughs> Honorable Ares, Yes, maybe thank you very much. Before, sorry, sorry, Honorable Alice. Maybe before Honorable Alice speak, it's okay. Proceed, Honorable Alice. It's all right. It's all right. Proceed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Good evening to each and everyone. Welcome to the provinces, Honorable Minister. Thanks for the presentations. I cannot help but to note that 8.8 million people in South Africa is food insecure. I have noted on slide nine that um, in terms of the cost for this food parcel is about 704 rand in money value. It is a bit worrisome because if you look at the food distributions in the free state, <laughs> In the free state, it's 50,692 parcels distributed to a value of 40 million. Um, then if you look at the statistics in the Western Cape, which is just about a hundred and something more, then it is 23,525,200. And in Limpopo, there is 108,419, it is double what is distributed in the free state. But when you look at the cost, it is far less. And the same with Mapumalanga. Mapumalanga got 60,000 total parcels distributed. The question that now arises is that if a food parcel is 704 rand, and if you do your calculations, I want to know, EFF want to know what other costs are they involved? Because if you do calculations, you can never come up to that total. Bear in mind that the provinces has indicated that they make use of NPOs, they make use of some of them did indicate, they make use of the army, some of indicated they make use of sub and, and, and etc. So I want to know how how is it possible that they can come up with that amount? Wow, why can't this funds not be utilized to, to distribute more food parcels? Because we have 8.8 .8 million people in the country that are food insecure. Instead, in so, sorry, 
Sorry, what is Why yes. is it not used to distribute to buy food instead of? I said, why? Oh, I, I want to know for what other cost it is being used, chairperson. Because if you do your calculations right at the at, at slide nine, they have indicated to us that the food parcels is seven hundred and four rand. So a ratio of one parcel per four to five people in the country. Now, if you do your calculations on that food parcels, it's impossible to come to the total expenditures that the provinces did provide for us. I make an example in the Western Cape, Chairperson, you have. Uh, in the in the free state, you have 50,000 parcels that was distributed to a cost of 40 million. But then in the Western Cape, you have 50,700 with a lesser was a 23 million expenditure, which means that the same amount of of food uh, 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 of food parcels was distributed. But when you look at the total expenditure, it speaks a different story. EFF would like to ask that the DG do an investigation and come up with a clear report so that they can tell us for what was all this money been spent for. Because it, it is impossible that all this money can be on food parcels as there is a standard food pass for 704 rand. Right. All right, then chairperson, Okay, then chairperson, we also would like to know that um, we would like to know how many times was this food parcel distributed because um, in Gauteng, the, the people did only get, at the beginning of lockdown, they did only get a food parcel. We want to know that how many times in this province is this total that has been given to us, how many times has this people been given food? Then we would also would like to know what is the progress of the cases where there was public representatives involved in stealing of food parcels. The provinces must come up and they must come and give us an indication what is the progress on these cases. And then in terms of, oh, and then I would also like to ask because the provinces must come up with an alter alternative strategy for us to, to, to show to us how can they increase and how can they ensure that we can make this 8.8 .8 billion people that are in food insecure how can we make this fee total lesser? Because right now, I think it's the first, money has been spent. Excuse is, me? Is, is the first time you go beyond your time? No, 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 Jay. It, it, no, no, it's not five minutes yet. Wait. And uh, we also would like to know what is the reason for, for, for uh, we did see that Sasa, we changed the payments date. What is so the, the, the reason for that? And then Sasa has indicated also about the 350 rand which is a successful i don't know what's the word that i want to call it in afrikaans it was a lack of word that was it's a successful of flop my yeah because this 350 uh, rand in the country is a groot kopsie tje ons mense kry almal sms's reg van die begin af het hulle geapply niemand kry nie elke week kom sasa en hulle vertel hulle nuwe story hulle het reg in die begin gesê dat hulle gaan elke twee week mense uitbetaal maar dit dit gebeur nie en hulle het nie 'n clear mechanism van hoe ons mense moet appeals aanteken die wat onsuksesvol was dankie sorry vir dankie you see the last part it's your right to use, but where I am, I'm at home. I don't have facilities. But I heard you speak about appeals and khabir. Khabir means happened or something. But people will record. Thank you very much, Aris. Uh, Alexander? Um, thank you. Thank you, Chairperson, and thank you for the presentation. Um, Oh, my question. Not eyebrows. I come here. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Um, thank you for the um, presentation. My questions are as follows. Um, the acting DG um, spoke of the food voucher um, and that it's been implemented. So my question is, if it is in effect currently, um, can we please get some data on the food voucher that's been um, in effect? And also, if it's a food voucher that's been that you can you buy airtime electricity with, 
uh, meaning uh, she would not be calling it an, a dignity voucher, an essential voucher. If it is, they're not just meant for food. Um, so if we can share data on that. Then um, the CEO for SASA covered most of my questions in that regard, but I just want to confirm, um, is the CEO or the department aware of any glitches at UIF when it came to the verification process? And then also to the CEO of SASA, um, is SASA still doing food parcels in all the provinces currently? Um, because there has been some rumors that now that we've moved over to the SRD um, grant that food vouchers food parcels I have stopped in some of the provinces. So is that still continuing? Um, then I also just want to touch on and what Honorable Member Aris was talking about. And I've also done the calculations in terms of how much on average mm -hmm. in per province. But my question, and I understand that some provinces might have higher transport costs or higher sourcing um, costs than in maybe Gauteng or the Western Cape, etc., where it's more condensed, more dense. But my question is then to highlight that, I mean, the Northwest spent on average a thousand rand per food voucher in their province. And then my question to the Eastern Cape is how did they get their food vouchers on the dot 700 per municipality per food parcel when every other province, it was not even seven, it wasn't even close to 700 rand on the dot. How did they get the amounts so perfectly on the dot to 700 per food, per food parcel, per municipality, per recipient? Um, then just to move on, I also want to raise the issue that we haven't been seeing slides of the food parcels that were looted and how many food parcels were stolen um, by whoever, um, public reps or whoever, officials, whoever, and looted. If we can guess, get some data on how much food parcels were um, lost to theft and looting. And then um, just on the ECD question, on the ECD um, issue. So I noticed in slide seven, it speaks about capacity building training for ECD operators to only start on the 20th of July, 2020. So does this capacity training for ECD operators apply to everybody, to the registered ECD, um, registered ECDs? And if so, and if and would they need to have this training before they open their doors? Because if that is the case, then they aren't opening their doors anywhere before the 20th of July. So if I can just get confirmation on that, and then in the same way that the department is going to go around to registered ECDs, making sure that they are compliant with the COVID regulations, are they going to be going around to the unregistered ECDs and ECDs who are still currently operating as we speak to close, down, to close their doors and ask the children to go play in the street? Just a and, the, and then, and then, and then, last, lastly, yeah. chair, lastly, um, on the very first presentation when the CEO of SASA was speaking, um, the uh, slide. I just want to check what slide number this is. Slide number eleven. Okay, I found this on the web and on the very first presentation Sorry. when Siri's doing something here. Yeah. Slide num slide number eleven speaks of total total for food parcels 22nd of June per province. Um, total number of applications received, total number of applications approved and rejected. There are only two provinces where the total number of applications approved and rejected matches the applications received. And that is the Northern Cape and the Western Cape. And I just want to find out from Sasa, why is that? Why is there a missing number of applications for food parcels on slide number 11 for seven of the other provinces. Thanks, Thank Chief. you. Thank you, Abrams. Uh, Honorable Van Amerwelis. Thank you, thank you, Voorzitter. Um, Chairperson, I, I'm not... <laughs> dank waar, dank waar, um, Chairperson, I'm not quite sure because we've got so many questions and, and it's already late. Um, so um, 
I would like to start off where Honorable Aris started off. And and, and for me, you, this is you, also... Honorable Van Amerven, yes? you know the approach most. When your time yes, is gone, you write, other, you write other questions. Kunjalo Chapers, and I'm, I'm okay with <laughs> yeah. okay. But um, so I, I've got many questions. My point is I'm okay with if all of them are not answered and I can and write into them. But um, I want to start with Honorable Aris started off with. And it's a very, it's a very, very valid point. And that is that, for example, as far as I understand, with regards to our food relief, we spend a thousand two hundred rand on food, a food parcel or a relief parcel, of which that includes food items, storage, transport, packaging, and delivery. So of the thousand two hundred rand that we spend on a food parcel, only seven hundred rand goes to the actual food that is contained in that parcel. And again, I would like, like to go back to the issue that the Honorable um, Alexander Abrams also raised. We need to get to the process. We can't keep on talking about um, food vouchers being the optimal or the preferred method. We need to get to that point where people are able to access their food vouchers instead of using this system of delivery of food parcels, which has got so many difficulties. I mean, you know, if we're saying that 50% of South Africa is going to become food insecure, then we need to realize that we need to step up our game and make sure that we use our money in the best way. And we can't be spending 700 Rand on food and 500 Rand on transport, deliveries, uh, security, packaging. It's, it's, it's not okay. Chairperson, um, I would like to go to, in the slide somewhere, we, there's, a, there's a talk about the ongoing talks with embassies in terms of them coming on board to to support or feed or support the, the, the their nationals living in South Africa. We've we've spoken about this in two meetings. I wanted to get the outcome in, in this regard. Uh, thirdly, there's a lot of talk about South Africa might see a rise in malnutrition rates. Um, I liked what Mpumalanga and, and the Western Cape spoke about when they said that they, in fact, have reopened uh, food uh, feeding schemes at schools. In other words, they either collected the food or they did takeaways uh, or they reopened uh, those facilities because we must remember that schools have already received the money in order to feed their learners. So I wanted to know whether this is actually a, a, a model which we can replicate in other provinces. I wanted to say it's also important going forward that we learn lessons from COVID-19 and that is that uh, we need a mechanism that will ensure that we track where food parcels are going in order to make sure that families, some families don't double dip or some families don't get three or four food parcels and other families don't get any. So that for me is one of the lessons that we must learn going forward. Um, I also wanted to understand from provinces whether they can give us an indication on uh, the extent of food parcel theft in their provinces whether it occurred from uh, politicians, councillors, et cetera, whether it was actually um, as bad as it was portrayed in the media, if they can give us figures in that regard. And then I want to go to the issue of the, the SRD, um, uh, well, to the, the special COVID grant. And as much as we thank the department and SASA for the work that they are doing, Chairperson, we must acknowledge that a lot of challenges remain. As we sit here, for example, I don't know if it's the same with other members, but you know, every day we get calls from desperate uh, citizens who, um, who tell you that, you know, um, I've been rejected, but I don't know why I've been rejected. Or they tell us that, you know, I've provided my bank account details in May already, but I haven't been paid. Or they tell us that, you know, I'm told that I appear on the UIF list. So I understand that these things are being addressed, but we need to speed up the process. There's still a 1.1 million people that need to be paid. Uh, the, the CEO has just told us that all of them will be paid by the end of June. And, and, and I wonder whether that is really... Um, a, a doable or a reachable timeline. Um, and so we really need to get an undertaking that all of these people will be paid by the end of June. I also want to know how long does it take to verify and finalize an application from the time that you get the application till the time that you pay it? What is the average time frames in this regard? And I'm, like I said, I'm asking because, you know, I've, I've got cases where people are saying to me, I already supplied the bank account details in May. It's now end of June and I haven't been paid. Also, I believe that the presidency's project management team or, or his office uh, convened a technical task team that provided payment and platforms and, um, and it was led by the Reserve Bank. And this group tested systems that will be able to provide end-to-end -end solutions. One minute to go, Lizzie. 
yeah, I'm almost done, Chairperson. Um, they actually came up with some proposals in terms of how to assist SASA, uh, SASA with uh, immediate verification. So in other words, they actually propose a system whereby if you if you log into a system and you give an ID number, it will be able to do real-time uh, verification. And this was a process led by the presidency and the Reserve Bank. So I wanted to know whether you took on board uh, the suggestions that this task team actually provided you with or whether you rejected it. Because I believe that, you know, if we listen to some of the 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 issues that were, was just raised. I mean, just think about it. You're a person who's applied for a 350 rand grant. You you are told you appear on the UIF database, and now actually you, you might not be on the UIF database. And I think it, it really causes a lot of stress and anxiety for a lot of people. So I would like to know whether you took on board the suggestions of this task team, uh, which provided you with, um, with some um, details in this regard or whether you rejected it and if you rejected it why was it rejected and really we need to move with speed to, in order to communicate to citizens lastly chairs and how they can go about to appeal uh, if they've been rejected to, because now they're contacting members of parliament or or their local community leaders which is correct but but you see the anxiety is that people don't know how to a appeal or b Get in touch with Sasa in order to to get this grant that is due to them. Um, I've got many more questions, but I can see Jefferson, okay. you are going to order now. So let me okay, let me. Thank you, Chair. Barbara, uh, Barbara Breed. Bye, thank you for your I hope it is clear. Chairperson, I would like to start off. Um, <laughs> I would like to maybe start off with the last presentation with Connie. Um, and I have to say, I am um, I'm very glad that Honorable Abrams asked that question in terms of when will we actually see ECDs opening, um, specifically taking into account that during one of the first media conferences, um, Minister Zulu actually said that we will be led by the Department of Basic Education in terms of as they are reopening as well. And we are really um, having distressing calls of parents who have no way to go with their children. Um, specifically, they need to return to work. Um, and also, I would like to know, I saw Connie showing us these wonderful pictures of, of the nursery schools, but I've also seen some really shocking ones where children are, a block is drawn on the playing field and each child has to sit in a block. How are we actually envision, envisioning this um, social distancing or, or no social distancing within our, our ECDs and explaining the, this to, um, our, to, the, to our children to actually understand um, what this is all about? Um, but Chairperson, then maybe I would like to speak about um, a court case that I became aware of um, in terms of which the Department of Social Development was the um, first respondent in, um, it was a solidarity case, and it was specifically regarding ECD's opening. Please unmute, uh, Honorable Briard. Hey, Chairperson, I see they've Thank muted you. me. Um, in, in terms of the court case, Chairperson, I hope um, I hope you can hear me now. Um, yes, the court case... Of, of social development um, or solidarity against social development was in terms of ECDs and it, and it was supposed to um, be in, in the court on the 23rd of June. But I understand from um, that this court case that the department indicated that they would oppose, but an affidavit and opposition uh, affidavit was never filed and they never um, made it to court. They never appeared there and that the judgment has actually been reserved up until a court case which which appears tomorrow, um, and there is a cost order. I hope um, I am translating it correctly back into English. Um, and there was a cost order um, in terms of that that court case um, to the department. And I would just like to get more details. What was the, the reason that um, a, a, a affidavit was not filed and that they did not appear in court? Is this not going to, you know, um, I think this uh, specifically taking into account that there is a, is a cost order against the department, I think this will, will severely hamper their budgeting um, and all of the other necessary things that the department does, however, do. Chairperson, then just maybe to speak to Sasa, um, and I want to thank the CEO. Um, I have, I'm not a crier, but I have never cried more in my life than this past week, um, specifically in terms of the 350 SRD grant. Um, and I, I really hope that that the UIF database um, has been resolved and we will find that. But my, my question is, Chairperson, will those people who were declined due to a UIF reason, 
would they have to phone Sasa or email Sasa um, and to request a revision of that? I was not, my, my line broke up, so I was not sure on that. Um, and or how will the appeal process work or will they automatically be rechecked? Um, when will we find out what the appeal process actually um, entails? And then what is the deadline for this revision of the people that were declined, that 2.2 million um, uh, and, and the revision of that? Then, Chairperson, I will try and be quick. Um, I would like to add to the food parcels. Is the department nationally considering an audit and to see whether there was value for money, because I also made the sums in terms of of um, in terms of petrol costs and what we're actually paying for those uh, for those those food parcels. And I would like to confirm just um, I know the Northern Cape mentioned specifically that travel costs were extensive. I assume that in that total budget allocation of the food parcels, they have actually indicated um, the the travelling included. I would just like con to confirm that. And then, Chairperson, maybe um, maybe um, Linton can can address that. But are we addressing the missing middle? I I see we are doing good jobs in terms of our indigent persons and a good job in terms of our our other beneficiaries. But my fear is that missing middle, those people who could not work in level five or level four, or level four or even level three. Um, I'm thinking of your hairdressers, those people that used to make a make an income and they then completely dropped off the map. How are we actually assisting them? Have they been catered for within these food parcels? And I saw KZN make mention specifically, Chairperson, of the fact that their selection criteria was questioned. Um, what is the selection criteria in terms of food parcels? Um, I know of a number of people that have been shown away. Um, how, how is that taken into account and, and how will that work? And then specifically also taking into account um, double dipping. I know the minister said in, in one of our previous meetings that they are having trouble with coordination so that we do not see that double, double dipping. But how have they actually addressed that? I think it was the Pumalanga and the Northern Cape, um, if I remember correctly, who actually spoke of, of their plans to do that. And um, how are we addressing that? Um, then, Chairperson, in terms of how they are distributing, Northern Cape and Pumalanga made mention that they are using their officials that did not work and to distribute. But I would like to know from the other provinces, how did they actually distribute? Um, one or two mentioned that they used um, they, they used civil organisations and NGOs, um, but did they pay suppliers? to actually deliver it, how did they go to work with delivering food parcels? And the donations that all of the, the provincial departments have spoken about, Chairperson, um, are those once-off donations? Do they have MOUs with those companies? Is it a monthly donation? If we can maybe just have clarity on <laughs> that. Is my tight clear? Yeah, it is clear. Can I just ask one question about the free state, Chairperson? Okay. Um, Last one, I promise, because Honourable Aris and Honourable Van der Merwe did cover my food parcel question. In terms of the free set, I see um, a large number of parcels were distributed to Le Leputswa district and the Tabo Mufunsanyana district. But our only metro, Mangong, has only 6,000 um, food parcels. So what informed their decision and how did they actually have such a high distribution of food parcels in these two very rural districts of ours, but the metro and the others have, have under 6,000 food parcel distributions? Um, Chairperson, that is my story. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Honourable Saika. Hi, Chair. You, uh, yes, here I am, Chair. I don't know if I am um, audible, Chair. You are. Okay. Um, thank you, Chair. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for um, the department for the presentations. Um, we, I appreciate that. Um, I just want to um, start by speaking about the cost of um, the food um, distribution. Um, specifically that was highlighted by Honourable Van der Merwe and Honourable um, Honourable Aris. Um, Chair, there, there must be a new way to do um, food distribution within communities without these high costs. Um, and so I would like to know what the breakdown of, of costs are in terms of warehousing and the cost of distribution. Um, to, um, 
from from the department and um, specifically if the provinces can also um, just give an indication of how much is actually being spent on getting food um, to the different communities. Um, and if I do speak about a new way, if we do have this high number of people where, um, you know, we know that more than a half of our um, population is going to need food, then isn't it now that we need to, to adopt a new strategy in terms of food distribution to localize the distribution? so that we do not um, pay costs to organizations um, as well to keep them afloat or to keep them, um, you know, um, sustain their businesses, but rather use community footprints to distribute food and lower the costs of getting food to communities. That's one. And then um, I really want to know who are the, um, the national food um, humanitarian agencies that are being used nationally. And in the Western Cape, uh, which other um, uh, humanitarian agencies is being used? Um, I heard four being mentioned. Um, it would really be helpful if they can give us who the other four um, agencies are, specifically in the Western Cape. The biggest challenge that we are having is how long it takes for food to finally um, get to the door of people. And so in the interim, before the food voucher system is being introduced, um, can we really look at that? Um, uh, the first um, um, sentence that I had around um, us using the local footprint, if you distribute to a church you and you make the church a warehouse, to distribute within their local community or any other religious organization. You will do it much faster than what the department is currently doing it. Um, and then secondly, I need also clarity on the UIS um, payments, Chair. Has there, been, um, has there now been factored in that the people that are currently unemployed, the hospitality sector is one example where we've had several inquiries around waitresses, around people that work within yeah. hospitality that has absolutely no um, income because either the, the businesses were not registered and so the impact to people that worked in that sector, and that's one example, has been absolutely dire. So has there been a collaboration between the department and the, uh, the, the different departments so that we can identify how we can assist people that are self-employed, like the hairdressers that was mentioned before, um, specifically also with small business, with a small business um, depart, a small business uh, ministry around how do we really support businesses that has been paying levies, that has that has um, 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 also um, you know had opportunity to get loans, but that has also been denied. Th those were all the queries that we've received, chairperson. And we need to know as the committee, how do we get the departments to collaborate in order for those different relief packages that has been introduced by government to be coordinated so that we not only focus on the food relief, but we also look at people that can be sustained by other measures that can be put in place. Um, the other uh, um, um, uh, last point that I want to make is around the delay on the opening of ECDs. We are concerned with the amount of children that are vulnerable and in our communities running around and without supervision. We've had issues in communities currently where the poorest communities now, um, I've heard this week that there is an ECD closing there because they, it's unsustainable. Even when the ECD centers are going to open up, th that ECD center is not going to open. So is there a way in which the department can please tell us how fast and how quick is this process going to take for ECDs to open up? Because we're having children not in danger of COVID-19, but in danger because they are being left alone at home and getting and children being missing. We had a child in my constituency missing, um, not missing, but neglected for three days. Those are the issues that I just want to bring Thank to your you. attention and ask Thank uh, for for clarity clarity on some of the questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, honourable members. Uh, we are going to go to the department, but what exactly? What really excites me are the different views and the rationale 
Why children must be at school? Why children must not be at school? All what this confirms is that COVID is tough. Uh, there are very few points I'm going to make. I think. Oh, what I was How can you forget me, Madiba? I'm, I'm, I'm fired. I've got no hope. What I was no, thank you very much. No, thank you very much. Uh, let me take this opportunity also to. No, proceed, honorable member. Proceed, honorable stop. Uh, what has happened to stop now? Honorable Stop. Chairperson? Yes. While Honorable Stock is um, frozen, uh, can I uh, ask a question uh, on behalf uh, of uh, Member uh, Masanko, please? She just uh, arrived in Cape Town and texted me. Uh, 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 uh. Honorable Stock. If Honorable Stock is there, is not there, he will come back. We are going to go to the department. No, I'm not going to do that, Honorable Emmett. You will understand what is going to open up. Uh, in the meantime, you can SMS to the, so that when they respond, they respond to you too. Uh, honorable members, I thought it's... came back from a search. Uh, honorable members, uh, I think it's important as a committee, I hope I'll be speaking on behalf of the committee, that we must express a strong appreciation to the set of various members of civic society who have been making contribution in this food distribution and feeding of our people, whether by being volunteers or contributing money from private sector. I think it is important for this committee to, to express that uh, appreciation. I think the minister spoke about the need about developmental issue Something I propose that we need to have a special session in particular on the NDA, probably look at what is the game changer in that area. So that when we talk resource requirements, we are on the same page. I think that what is clear here, and I've listened to the members, in particular from the presentation of both prov all provinces and the department, is that there's a huge threat because of COVID, of bigger numbers falling in the insecure in the in the insecurity food insecurity uh, section, which is a huge threat. My biggest worry here is that I hope the department will make comments about this. Is that when we were looking at the state of transition of ECD from the social development social development department to basic education? There were scary representations there about, about uh, the underfed children, poor malnutrition, and all, and all the implications that lie in there. My biggest worry, Minister, is even if the food is short, isn't there a way to ensure that at least children, all of them, have access to food? But the, the fact that there's a need to do something about feeding people who don't have food is has come very stronger in the presentation. Uh, in, in other words, the gap is articulated. If you're supposed to feed 14 million people, you only feed five point something. That's a very, that's a very, very serious thing. I think, I think all of us need to be worried about this. And it appears that coordination, demand, outstripping supply, resources, uh, Western Cape introduced the safe distribution. These are matters that seem to cut across in terms of challenges. Department, you've got 15 minutes to respond. Uh, sorry, Chairperson. Uh, 15 minutes Mr. to respond. Yeah? Mr. Stock is back. Okay. Honorable Stock. Uh, 
Thank, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. I had some issues with connectivity there. I want to apologize. We're not in, responsible for that. Proceed. <laughs> yes. Uh, I've got just three questions that I wanted to pose to the. Oh, um, Bosian. May I make a proposal, Chairperson? Yes. If in case he doesn't connect, while the department is busy answering, he might be able to have a WhatsApp or, or SMS his question. I agree with yes. you. On our good talk is a leader. I think you will assist us on that. Thank you very much. Department, I give you 15 minutes. Uh, thank and you very I much. add another minute so that you finish at quarter two. Thank you, Chair. I won't deal with all the, uh, the, the issues. I'll just respond to one or two, and then I'll ask Connie to deal with the ECD matters, the CEO to deal with the uh, SASA matters, and of course, I suppose you'll give a chance to the provinces to respond as well. Um, just on the issue of the food parcels, uh, we want to say that 700 rand of the food parcel actually goes for the actual food. We have about the 50 rand uh, cost that is for admin costs. So um, as we indicated, uh, what we normally do, and this is purely for the work that we're doing at National, together with the provinces. Of course, food parcels differ. We're not the only ones providing food parcels. And so the quantities of the food parcels and the cost of the food parcels will differ with those who are providing uh, food parcels, particularly donors and private sector, etc. cetera. Um, so uh, um, how many times have we distributed? I think we've, we've at National, we've distributed once, uh, and twice, I think it is, but I know the provinces have gone beyond that. Um, and then um, the other issue regarding uh, food vouchers is just to say that we are looking for efficient systems and effective systems. We're not completely stopping food, uh, 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 food parcels. We're saying we must move quite gradually and deal with a, a system that is effective, et cetera. But we're not completely stopping uh, food vouchers. It's going to take a while for us to move to that. And we have not yet moved to that. We're exploring the different options that have come to us around how we're moving on that. Um, how then there's the issue of the solidarity case. We actually did appear, Chairperson. Uh, the matter was postponed by the judge. And it wasn't because of us that the matter was postponed. We appeared accordingly um, and the matter was postponed. So um, we can provide more information to that uh, in that regard if, if required. Then um, I wanted to just say it takes about 48 hours to deliver the food because in food in some of the food parcels we have vegetables so that we ensure that those are not spoiled. So um, and yes, we are working with various organizations, including the UN Commission for Refugees and other government departments in terms of the work that we're doing. I'll stop there for now, Chair, and ask Connie to deal with the ECD related matters uh, and then CEO to deal with the uh, issues relating to SASA. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you, um, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. The issue of capacity building, uh, we are saying it starts anytime because I indicated that all the SOPs and the guidelines and the capacity building program, it's already dispatched and it's, uh, it's easy to follow. What we have also said is that the networking ECD organizations must assist with capacity building, but also your well-established ECDs, they must volunteer. There's a form where we said they must indicate if they are willing to also capacitate the other uh, um, disadvantaged ECDs to be um, on COVID-19, specifically general information. Um, the issue of COVID-19 is one thing that we're not going to compromise in the process of opening the ECDs. So with the capacity building and self-assessment and verification, we're targeting both registered and unregistered, but in disadvantaged communities because we know they are servicing the needy children and they need more support than the rest. Now, I think the acting DG has spoken about the court case, which is sub care, but it has been postponed to 30th June. That's what we can say um, at this meeting. We're going to appear on the 30th of June. I think that's basically um, what was supposed to be. Uh, we, there was one on whether we're working with DBE. Yes, we're working with DBE health and other departments, including civil society organizations in preparation for opening. Uh, so even when we open their age cohorts, 
that are within education that will be impacted by the protocols that we have sent out. So as they, as and when they open in the independent schools and public schools, they will follow the um, protocols that we have come up with. Thank you. Yep, another one. You guys are doing well, I can't believe you. CEO? Uh, Chair, I will I will ask uh, Diane to to talk to the issue of the food parcels, but just to highlight uh, to Honourable Van der Merve, who was asking a question as to whether it's feasible for us to be able to to pay the the one million people. The accounts have already been opened, uh, so we've been opening a, a hundred thousand accounts starting from last Sunday. That's why we, we know for certain that we'll have covered that uh, 1 million. Just uh, today, there were about 75,000 accounts that were sti still outstanding of that uh, of that 1 million. And we're continuing to explore other channels so that we don't use just the channels we have. The issue of the banks, we, we had been delayed a bit, but we're getting closer. We're finalizing tomorrow the MOA so that we can be able to, to use uh, cell phone banking. The MOA is going to... It has been finalized. The, 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 the products have been developed by the four banks that we contracted for them to be able to assist us in terms of this process to make sure that, again, we speed it up on the on the, on the payment process. So on the issue of the, the clients that we are having to revet, again, on the issue of the UIF uh, database, we got the database today, as I indicated earlier. Normally, once we've got all the data sets, it takes about a day, so we should be completed in terms of looking at the 2 million accounts by the end of this weekend so that we can ensure that uh, those people can actually uh, uh, get paid as, as soon as that process has, has been completed. We'll then advise them by sending them self uh, SMSs in terms of when they will get paid. But obviously, those that had applied earlier will get paid not, not only for, 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 for June. If they applied in, in May, they will get paid for, 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 for both months. So that is on track. I will ask uh, Diane to ask, answer the question with regards to the, to the issue of food parcels and what's in our food parcel, the cost thereof, and what it is that we pay for administration. Thank you, Chair. Yep. Thank you, Chair. Um, and good evening, Honourable Members, Honourable Minister. Just to say that SASA is now no longer issuing food parcels because our concentration is on the, the making sure the free food grant gets out. And the target group or the target category of people are the ones who now qualify for the 350 grant. So we're focusing on the getting 350 grant out. We've stopped the food parcels in all of the provinces. However, that doesn't mean that food relief has stopped because SASA wasn't the only one providing the food relief. It's just the food relief provided by SASA that is no longer being provided um, while we focus on the 350 grant. The issue around the cost of our food parcel, the cost of the actual food in the food parcel is um, between eight and 900 rand. And then the balance, because our total food parcel cost is 1,200 rand, the balance covers issues like transport, packaging, warehousing, um, and all the other administrative costs. Um, and it is done in terms of a contract that was entered into the specific service providers. That contract comes to an end now at the end of June. We did ask for an extension because we, although we're not issuing food parcels, if there is a disaster other than the pandemic, um, you know, if there are fires in an informal settlement or floods and so on, then we do still go in and provide humanitarian support. And for that reason, we still need suppliers for food parcels because we are in and help there. Um, as much as we're looking with social development as other way, as other means of support people. Thank you so much, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Are we done? Yeah, thank you very much, Chair. I think we're done from the department side. Um, there were some questions posed to provinces, uh, which I'm, 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 i am 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 um, I'm, you must be muted. I am unmuted. There is a problem with you. you your sound is struggling. I don't know what is the word. What is happening? I'm not, not muted. 
okay. we accept that minister, we can hear your voice. We accept that the fact that we can hear your voice, it means you're not muted, but the fact that your voice, you are not legible, because I think I don't know what is the word, what is the problem? Uh, uh, check, I know what uh, I think it's a network from their side. No, I think it's a network, yeah. Mm. Yeah, check, check. Did anyone know what the question about whether we took we can't hear you, Minister. So it, did anyone try to follow what the minister was saying? I think I can I think I can sort of uh, make sense of what the minister is saying. The minister is please, asking please, about, please, please, about please, the please, question please. that we didn't receive. I think it's a question on the escalation process for those people that have been fined, uh, which uh, Diane can speak to. The other question was the issue of the change of dates, uh, for, uh, the, and that was the appeals process. Diane will talk about the appeals process. The issue of change of dates for the whole year. In the past, we used to pay on the first, and now we pay every month on the third day of the month, and that process is going to continue. And it's not, not a new process. It's a process that, that we started actually in March, and we continue to use that process. Diane, can you just talk to the escalation process, which is what I suspect the minister is asking about? Thank you, CEO. Um, honorable members, we are working with social development to get an appeals process for people that have been declined. However, what we wanted to do first is to clean up the information. So we run all of those that were declined because they were found on the UIF database, as CEO was saying, again, the, the updated database which we received today. Then um, people will be advised. They will also be advised that they can ask SASA to relook at the case, which we will do. And if they're still unhappy, then it will be escalated to the Department of Social Development so that there's an independent assessment of the decisions made um, so that we can make sure there is administrative justice in this entire process. Um, the, the details, sorry, Ted, the details of your, the details of the appeal process will be contained in the amended directions, which are due to be published very shortly. Can, can the te technical people check what's the problem with the minister whilst we are proceeding? Uh, I can see the minister, I can see a face, but no, you can't no, hear the respond. I'm not sure. I think the minister has clarified uh, which question it is that I had not uh, answered. It was the issue of the, 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 the task team that was in the presidency that uh, had worked on a solution uh, on what it is that was going to, do, to be done with regards to uh, COVID-19. We were not aware of the task team. So the task team, did, uh, some of the people from National Treasury, uh, including uh, the, the people from the Left Bank, did present to us some of the solutions that they had come up with. They had not de developed the system. It's important to know that this was a work that conceptualized what they had done. And the bulk of the work that they had done, the work that we decided that we were going to implement uh, on our side, and why we made that choice, it, it was because we felt that it was important for us to build the capability internally so that we can make all the learnings that we take, for example, from some of the onboarding processes, the application process that we currently are doing, for example, on COVID-19, for us to make sure that we bring those issues in, in terms of how we do the rest of this. Uh, for example, it's helped us in terms of being able to develop problem for people in future when they want to apply either for an old age grant or they want to apply for still the platform uh, for fabulous. Uh, no, no, no. I was, I was explaining why we did not take the solution and the fact that we have taken uh, the concepts right. that they had come up with and were not part of it. Okay. Thank okay. you, Jeff. From the provinces, respond only if your issue has not been catered for. Any province that wants to come in? Uh, Chair Mbuman, I would like to come in. Uh, Honourable Member Lisa van der Merwe uh, asked whether we have opened soup kitchens in schools, and I needed to just clarify that one. Um, the Department of Education, during the Level 5 lockdown, came to us to indicate that they've got a huge amount of um, food that they had bought and they stored it in the schools. And now that the schools are closed, they are concerned that the food will get spoiled. So therefore, they then indicated that they are willing to donate that food to Department of Social Development for repackaging. So we repackaged the food and then distributed it as part of the food parcels to the various households. Thank you, Jane. Yeah, well, another plus.
uh, Western Cape. A uh, question about the four humanitarian relief organizations that yes. were funded. Is that Pascal? Yes, that's okay. Western. Uh, the, the four organizations that were funded was SANZAF, Islamic Relief, Red Cross Society, and Gustada uh, Finn. Done? Uh, thank you, Jane. Thank you very much. Another province? Any other province? Just... Have province on somebody? Province? Is that okay? Counting. Counting hand is up. Counting must respond, okay? So just on, on, on two issues. Um, just to indicate that we. Uh, in relation to people who have received food parcels at the beginning of the lockdown and whether we're doing a uh, second round as yes indeed we, 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 we have been the second round as check we had a, lot, a long list of people who uh, still needed to be serviced but we already have people that we are already attending to um, um as, as a second round as should be put into and just to also indicate um our cost of food parcel in the company ranges between 458 to 660. um so so 700. i think the advantage is when you procure in huge numbers, in bulk, and, and because you procure in big numbers, then the prices will go down and are able to um, um, uh, uh, get more uh, for less, if I'm able to say that. But I agree with, with the proposal that uh, the concept of offers will, will, will minimize and reduce reduce costs that are linked to the logistics of food distribution. Thank you very much. Uh, no, thank you, sir. Department, can we send the right up to clarify that there's more for all members? Uh, not worse, nothing from you. No, 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 no. All right, Honorable Chair, I think um, two of the honourable members had a question on the mass transport. What what, what we meant with that was uh, the logistical challenges everyone was confronted with, not necessarily service providers. We had to rely on the municipalities to rely on six departments, six, six departments to provide transport for us to uh, ensure the distribution. That was during lockdown, lockdown five. So it, it's the logistical uh, nightmare. Uh, to transporters and DSD as a pro as a provincial department did not have the infrastructure to do it. I no. hope it clarifies. Thanks, ma'am. Uh, Lipopo, anything? Uh, we are covered. Thank you very much. Hey, uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. We are covered uh, by the responses of other parties. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Part of the response that uh, Acting DG said about uh, the quantities which are different and the costs do, do also differ because it's uh, in some cases it's not the department Don they receive the, the donations where whether it's uh, the private business that has or in other cases it's municipalities so the, those quantities uh, differ but the cost on average is uh, seven is the seven hundred fifty package. There was also a question regarding the numbers uh, breakdown per district the numbers that uh, we provided. Are the numbers as we received from the different uh, uh, district meetings. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, what's up? Eastern Cape. What has happened to the Eastern Cape? Yeah. This is how we catch the people to have visual meetings. Jackson, HOD of the Eastern Cape, we are covered by the resources right. already provided. I thought it disappeared. <laughs> No, so we're still here. Okay, oh, that's fine. Uh, Mr. are you able to come in? Linda. Uh, yeah. No, no, we can't. Chair, if I'm audible at this point. Okay, okay, I can hear you now. Yeah. Come in, Minister. Uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, We're waiting for you. Do you, you have nothing to say? Okay. Uh. All right, members. I think I take this opportunity again as usual. Just one, one, one. Yeah, uh, I think the, 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 the... Oh, it's fine. Oh, I've had you. Thank you, Honourable Members. Uh, 
Again, I want to thank all of you for participating in this fruitful way. It was a very important session. Well, together with the provinces, I must express my immense gratitude to the coordination that ensured that all provinces are here. And thank the provinces again. Hopefully, take this invitation and make it very serious. Because it's always critical to have a, a picture and, uh, from the whole map. And I think provinces were here. I'm not exactly sure what. I don't know. What's happening? What is happening? Honorable Minister? Okay, I don't know. Uh, again, let me thank all of you, including the Minister, I think I'll engage the Minister after this. Uh, thank all of you, colleagues, teachers, MCs, Lindy, and the team of the post team of the committee, your lead, CI, all of guys, and uh, those who do the IT technology back. Thank you for such a successful meeting. It's clear to me that there's a lot of issues that the community needs to, the country needs to focus on, especially when it comes to the gap that I've already spoken about, and so on. At this opportunity, I will be at this time, no, with, the power, with the power that's like in the chapel, to get the meeting to seven times everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Bye. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. 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 And meeting, guys. See ya. <laughs> bye bye. I'll send you. Good, Charlie. I'm telling you, it's a week. Yeah, you are. I'm going to go. Bye.